sort of man. But I mean, like, clearly they see potential. Mm. I'm not saying anybody sees potential in this because we have not been offered a million pounds. No. Yet. I mean, we haven't been as we haven't been million pound consistent yet. I don't think. Nah, <laughs> nah. We're getting there. We have our moments. Of we, oh, million pound for sure. Brilliancy. But I just don't think we're we're at the at the million yet. A hundred million. No. <laughs> it's much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so probably yeah. not there either. Yeah. Which is not good for our listeners. Some ASMR. Mm. Mm. Why did you do that noise? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just dawned on me when I did. Mm. <laughs> but this is what I don't get the, about snacking. I think I've got it all wrong because some people are happy to just sit with four or five nuts and be like, mm, that's, a, that's a snack. That's a snack. Well, that's to a me, snack. Yeah. You know? Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Four or five nuts is a garnish. Most most weekends, like I'll buy like a bag or two of either cashews or like pistachio nuts. I mean, and just eat the whole thing. Yeah. You know, there's like 800 calories a bag. <laughs> you know, yeah. Please, I'll take a top up, sir. Um, and one of the one of the better. <laughs> oh, you taught me up <laughs> the brim, sir. I to get you <laughs> you some just ice. kept going. <laughs> I would imagine because ocean water is warmer. Sorry, I apologize for that. <laughs> I way overfilled that. Hello everybody and welcome to the Empty Promise Podcast. My name is Chris and today on this fine Sunday morning, you're joining me and my best friend in the whole wide world, Mr. James D. Danny. Hello. It's finally here. It's episode 100. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. we. I feel like we could have had balloons. I feel, yeah, we could have had balloons. Some kind of party poppers. Got streamers. Streamers. Could ribbons. Have whole cake. Ca- oh, cake would have been terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we really messed up. We didn't. We did. We had loads of time to plan, but <laughs> the thing is, is that we we're we're all about like modesty. We're not gonna put it. We're gonna throw it in your face, you know. We're trying to do things like yeah. gently, yeah. not gently. Yeah, we're not gonna be like low uh, key Billy Big Balls over here on the hundredth yeah. episode, you know. Which Although we are on our hundredth episode, yeah. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty. It's I mean, it would, I mean, we didn't get a kick, but it would does you know it. Would it be deserves a kick, yeah. To have a cute, cute. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, thank you for joining us. If you're a returning listener and you've waited so long for episode yeah. 100, if you're a new listener to the show, hello and welcome. I hope this episode finds you well. I guess this uh, is a big 100, but it's number one for you. Number one for you. Number 100 for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've made a couple of changes that you probably will not see in this studio. Uh, you might hear it a little bit because the audio will probably be a wee bit crispier. True. Crispy? Crispy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, you won't see it. We might. I said we said we might do a studio tour at some point just to show it off, because it's pretty sick in here now. It's got 100 thumbs up from the video. <laughs> 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 or if you're listening to this, I don't know. I don't know how people who are listening to this... That's right. Yeah, you should probably tell... Sh- like, you should tell people <laughs> that we have a video version. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So this is... If you're listening to the audio of this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever, podcast hosting... Or listening service that you use we do have a video version on youtube mm-hmm. uh, youtube.com slash empty promise podcast you'll find us there oh. we have a video version for like oh like about nearly 100 of the episodes yeah there is a video version yep yeah yeah so go check out you get the whole back catalog there's a video version with proper video like where you actually see us for like a good 70 80 of those episodes like the opening yeah. 20 were like just like just our blank. logo spinning <laughs> or something you know it's so stupid. bad yeah it's or so just bad. a still you know, picture <laughs> a lot of the time the camera broke yeah it did yeah. it only worked for 20 when it burst so there was actually one the i was looking back um through our like catalog and there was once that we <laughs> we used like my phone as a camera <clears throat> to record the podcast but we taped the phone to a cereal box <laughs> i remember because <laughs> we didn't have a tripod yeah what was it it was a, a captain matey <laughs> oh marshmallow matey marshmallow yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was yeah we just taped the phone right <laughs> off there and hit record and it looked great it looked great the thing is here's a, here's a little thing if you watch that episode the, the the camera starts and we're we're perfectly in shot and by the end it is just slipped <laughs> off the tape <laughs> it's like way to the left hand <laughs> side <laughs> Fucking but uh, I mean, the, the audio is still there. It was still yeah, a good episode. So, yeah, solid. It was only me and you that time. It as was, well. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget the actual. It's episode always only number. me and Chris these days. But uh, yep, we should, we will have some guests soon though. Some guests. So we used to have guests quite yep. on the frequent. On the frequent. Now we've set up a nice, comfortable habitat for them to come and join yeah. us in. They can uh, live in there, and we can bring them in whenever we need them. Yeah, and then. they can sit out in the green room and yeah. wait. There's a green room now. You can't see any of this. We could be lying, for <laughs> all you know. But there's a whole another room in here. Now. We are the. <laughs> we are. I wouldn't say like we're like chief liars, but we're like we're, we're home the empty, empty promise. promise. Yeah. yeah, it's the home of the empty promise. You don't have to believe us because we don't always, you know, hold up. But 
we're, we're changing bit by bit. I mean, we're yeah, getting there. Right? I mean, yeah. we're like we're like everybody else. You know, we're endearing to be the thing that we say we are. You know, we're trying to be no better way of putting that. Yeah, yeah. that's a we're just we're just people. We're just people. <laughs> right. Let's get on with this show. Okay. So episode one hundred uh, comes to us on the thirtieth of August, twenty twenty. We're on this day. Nothing exciting happened. Just nothing. I checked the on this day. There was there was so little. Oh, hang on. 1682, William Penn leaves England to sail for the New World. There you go. I don't know if he made it. Um, I feel <laughs> like I feel like I know. No, William Tell, I'm thinking of. William Tell was the, the archer? Yeah. Putum. That's all. William Penn, God, he knows what he did. Do you know the actual story of William Tell? No, I just know that there's a song. So he was imprisoned. He was a famous archer and he was imprisoned. Now, I could be getting details a little bit mixed up here, but the general gist of it is he was imprisoned for something and he made a he made a deal with the, the king or the lord or whoever it was at the time that if he could shoot an arrow off the head of his son, he would be allowed to go free. An apple. An ap- What did I say? An, an arrow. arrow. Sorry, a- yeah. an apple with an arrow. Yeah. Uh, you know, with bone arrow. Uh, he would be allowed to go free. And he did it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to watch it find out. <laughs> Episode actually, 101. I actually don't know. I think something might have, like, he might have, like, shot the king or something, you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he's, like, kind of, like, aiming and then just, like, whoosh, boom. Yeah, maybe. I've no one saw it coming. Run, son. Something like that, you know? Yeah. I'd say he probably just shot the apple, to be fair. Maybe. I feel, because that's what he's, well, like, that's, like, the famous thing associated with him is shooting the apple. He was so. really good. Yeah. There used to be a, a great game called, like, Bowman. Do you remember that? Bowman? No, yeah. it wasn't called Bowman. I was the new R. Apple Stick Archer or something. something. <laughs> <laughs> so different. <laughs> Apple Stick Archer? It was like where you just had to click the mouse and you just had to click the arrow and you had to just keep getting it like to hit the apple. But you could like impale this guy against the wall. Anyway, in 1901, Hubert Cecil Booth receives a British patent for the vacuum cleaner. I was going to say the phone booth. That would have been so much better. But it's not. The vacuum cleaner, there you go. And there are only a handful of words in the English language containing two U's side by side, two of which are continuum, spelled C-O-N-T-I-N-U-U-M. Did not know that. And vacuum, V-A-C-U-U-M. I did know that. There's like a handful more, but I'm not going to go into them. But very, very little. It's a very uncommon thing for two U's. Did not, there you go. Here's a riddle for you. Yeah. Uh, what word can you take away five letters and it'll still sound the same? Ooh. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you what it begins with because I think it begins. Can you leave that one with me as the show goes on? Yeah. Maybe we'll pick back up on that towards the end. Yeah. So that way anybody listening can try to solve that. <coughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. You enjoy that one. Excellent. I got all extra away. That's all I'm saying. Wait, so say it again. What, what word can you take away? Four of the... There's, there's a fi- yeah, you, what, word, what word can you take away? Four of the five letters and it'll still sound the same. That's, that's important actually because that, that helps a lot. I think. <clears throat> okay. I'll think of this as the show goes on. Yep. For sure. I like riddles. I really like riddles. Actually. Yeah, oh, we did a bunch of them last night for whatever reason. Oh, nice. Yes. Are you back home? Are you back home? Yeah, yeah. I was You're just down in Darnus. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Darnus. Awesome. You just fucking give away our position, Chris. Sorry. I mean, never mind. <laughs> uh, some news. Do you want to jump into some news? Yeah, maybe? yeah, I got yeah. some news. I mean, there's been a lot of news that we've like missed. It's been like two months, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're going to do what we're always doing. We take a big hiatus, which we're going to go for like the last week of news. <laughs> last couple of days. As of if news. the rest of time just did not yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah. Because we're oblivious to it. Uh, you hit me with a bit of news, and then I'll hit you with a bit of news. Okay. Um. Uh, I guess I'll start with the sad news that uh, oh, yeah. Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman yeah. died of cancer at age yeah. 43. That's right. Seriously young. I didn't, like, obviously nobody knew he was uh, yeah. suffering from... He had kept this uh, to himself, and it only was revealed after he had died. Yeah, it's obviously really sad. Crazy, um, man. It's, it's sad to think of anyone dying at that age. Yeah. But then yeah. it's whenever you see someone who's like quite popular. Yeah. It brings it to the fore. It it can it shows as well that like like especially with cancer and like big illnesses, it doesn't matter who you are, what money you have, like it exactly. will find like it, <laughs> it will it, find it, you. Not, it will, Jesus, that sounds so wrong. It will but, like, kill you. It can, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. It like, waits yeah. for no man. You know? Yeah, like Prince or Popper, like, you know. If you get it, you get it. And exactly. You know, I mean, to be fair, like a lot of rich people are better equipped to deal with it. And that's the yeah, unfortunate yeah. reality. Yeah. Especially particularly in America. Yeah. Oh, where yeah. you basically go broke yeah. fighting cancer. Yeah. Um, thank God for MHS. Or HSE, wherever you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right enough. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It was sad news. And then all the... Like my whole Reddit feed yesterday was just filled of with like uh, pictures of him like visiting like the children's hospitals yeah. and things like that while Tribute he was fighting stuff. fighting his own battle. Yeah, it's uh, it's sad. It's really really sad. Had he filmed anything else? Yeah, he had like um, I think he filmed re- like 
there was some movie. I know he had done, but I mean, like, had he filmed anything um, MCU related, like for the future? Do you know what I mean? Don't know. I don't know. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, he was in a couple of other movies, wasn't he? Mm. I think. Yeah, he was in one movie where he played a famous. I don't know who the, the movie is about, but he played a famous baseball player. That's uh, 43, it's called, I think. Yeah, 43. Something, something like that. It's 40 or 43. Something. And like, he died on the anniversary of that <coughs> bigger baseball player. Oh, did he? Yeah, oh, well, some yeah. weird coincidence like that. But um, yeah, it's pretty mad. You just don't ever think about these things. You don't actually think about these things ever until like something like this happens. Yeah, I know. And then you're like, oh yeah, fuck. It's the uh, draining infinite mortality of life D. <laughs> <laughs> don't know go. just all the words are there yeah just do yeah. something with it, it. sounded deep uh, staying it. on uh, kind of film and movie news <laughs> not that it's film and movie news that sounded so wrong <laughs> oh jeez keeping in the biz in the industry <laughs> okay well uh, mm. uh, well a while ago um, the new Witcher spinoff was announced at Netflix do you see that I've heard about uh, Blood this. Origin yes um, which is going to be an animated film starring uh, Geralt of Rivia's adopted fa- adoptive father and men- mentor, Vesemir, mm-hmm. um, titled Nightmare of the Wolf. Much to the excitement of the fan base, Netflix has now revealed that it uh, has much more in store for the franchise, including another spin-off, uh, this time live action. The Witcher Blood Origin is a prequel set 1,200 years before Geralt of Rivia rides into the town of uh, Blaviken, set before, during, and shortly after the catacly clismic event known as the conjunction of the spheres blood origin is expected to reveal how monsters and men arrived to the continent which was then populated primarily by elves it is assumed that the series will tell the tale behind the creation of the very first witcher it's a six-part limited series um yeah looking forward to that yeah it sounds time. good yeah. i think it's right way to do something like that as well like a spin-off is yeah six part that's it it's the end. witcher the witcher was hugely popular and they're back filming now season two. Yeah. I know that it stopped, you know, due to COVID. COVID yeah. um, but they're back filming and, um, oh God, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Me too. Season. Me yeah. too. I think Netflix really want this to be their Game of Thrones. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm going to spin it off every which way they can. Netflix is just firing out like banger after banger to be fair that's like, it i think yeah. i think I, I think netflix are more of the approach is just throw enough shit against the wall and see whatever. what sticks exactly yeah. have they you just... watched hidden gems yet no oh fuck i recommend it jesus no. oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> i watched a few movies actually which i'll talk about um after in personal with the podcast oh nice yeah okay okay um i can stick in movie news yeah you want movie news yeah for okay. I, I, I can give you a little bit okay. um a little bit of Nick Cage news. Oh, yeah. A little bit of Nick Cage news in this podcast. <laughs> I'm just trying to every week. That's underselling it, I, I know. think. I'm trying to get every week something Nick Cage related. I mean, what was it? I had the most tenuous link last time, didn't I? Yeah, there I was something about was. Nick Cage. Yeah, it was like, uh, it just somehow made it. Oh, yeah, into... it was, uh, we did the, the previous episode was the talking about the forest of... Uh, Oh, Forest Fen Fe- Treasure. Forest Fen. Yeah. The Forest of Forest Fen. <laughs> the Treasure of Forest Fen. Which, by the way, proved a hugely popular episode. With, That's good. With uh, some recurring yeah. fans. So much so that they didn't actually want it. They were, my reaction was the correct reaction, I think. They, uh, w- they wanted it to end better? They wanted the treasure to still be there. Oh, still be out there, They yeah. wanted to go and find the treasure. We are, you know, we're in the very early stages of planning our old treasure hunt. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think this can happen. I yeah. thought about this more, Dee, and I think more. I've got a couple of clues that I think will be awesome to do that's good that's if good if we can make this happen if we can pull this off this would be <laughs> it's ooh, good you'd have to tune in every week to get a new clue get another clue oh, build your way up that'd but um yeah yeah so we, we always have like some sort of tenuous link to nick cage every episode this yeah, episode so sorry how did you link the forest fan to nick forest fan treasure national treasure nick cage Jesus Christ. you know it works it works <laughs> you know it doesn't sound like it works but uh, yeah. I, I, it was organic at the time you know if you listen to the episode you'll understand what i'm talking now, about that was throwing shit at the walls <laughs> <laughs> i thought it worked beautifully i think it was a perfect dovetail you know what listen <laughs> you had to be there you were there you should know better. <laughs> um, <laughs> Nick Cage is going to voice a drunk dragon in the movie High Fire. Ever uh, heard of uh, the High Fire novel by Ian Cofer? No. You know Ian Cofer? Yes. He wrote uh, Artemis Fowl. Yes. Irish author. Yes. Great man. Probably. Never read the Artemis Fowl books. Neither they were I. huge when we were at uh, yeah. high school. Apparently, though, have you heard about the Artemis Fowl movie? Movie? It's just part Terrible. of shit. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. It's just uh, called like Artemis or something, isn't it? Uh, yeah, probably yeah. something stupid like that. Try to be niche. Um, so this is another movie. I think it's, I think it's, a, it's an animated movie. It'll be set in a world where dragons once ruled the earth and Lord Highfire ruled the dragons. Uh, now, however, all Highfire rules is his shack in Honey Island Swamp in Louisiana. 
He goes Ooh. by the name Vern <laughs> and spends his day hiding out among the alligators, watching cable TV and drinking obscene amounts of vodka. Oh, ooh. So a part made for Nick Cage, really. Is this adult? Yeah. It sounds as adult. I mean, what, what kid show is going to show a dragon drinking vodka? Uh, it's true, actually. Vern is prepared to do whatever it takes, even if that means violence to protect his yep. own hide. Yeah, it sounds like it's adult. Yeah. Um, but how are they going to do adult? Right? You know what? I just... I, it possibly isn't a kid's novel, High Fire. If anyone can do it. Nick, Nick Cage. Cage. I'll yeah, always man. have trust in Nick Cage. Got a little bit extra Nick Cage news, a little bonus Nick Cage. Go for it. Um, probably more interesting to people who have watched the Netflix docu series Tiger King. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Nick Cage is going to play Joe Exotic in a like a scripted movie, mo- like series of that series or movie S- series. Ooh. Um. So that's another perfect role for Nick Cage. Have you watched it? Enough of the cycle. Watched like one or two episodes of it. Yeah, were you uh, so like? Did you get into it? Kind of. Yeah. Not enough into it that we finished it though. I watched the the first episode and I couldn't. I just didn't. I couldn't come in. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Like I wasn't ready to go for the next batch of episodes. Yeah. Um. Uh, I got into but yeah, seems like seems like a good role for Nick Cage. Love Nick Cage in this in this podcast. We do. If you don't like Nick Cage, give him a chance. He's a good guy. That's what I got next for in here. We needed a picture of Nick Cage mm-hmm. just in a frame. Um. Get it signed. Minecraft creator Marcus Notch uh, Person has deleted his Twitter account after getting into a disagreement with gaming journalist Mark Brown, better known for the YouTube channel Game Makers Toolkit. Ever since Notch sold uh, Mojang and Minecraft to Microsoft for a massive two point five billion. Jesus Christ! Just let that sink in. Billion. Um, he has become notorious for making controversial comments on Twitter regarding topics such as gender, race, and sexuality. The quarrel stemmed from Brown tweeting about his dislike for advertisements on his videos, particularly those related to politics. Notch, who founded Mojang Studios and developed Minecraft in 2009, voiced his displeasure at Brown and asked him to drop the politics. The two have struck a deal where Brown will divert from political discussion and Notch will delete his Twitter account. Oh, so was he like a... It was like an agreed thing? An agreed thing. Oh, that's strange. Uh, He justified the drastic action of deleting his Twitter account as, quote, one small step towards the old internet. Yeah, oh. he seems like the type of guy who talk about things like the old internet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah, I mean, he didn't he create like Minecraft was created like Java, wasn't it? Like it was like old, old. Yeah, it? well, no? yeah, Java you wouldn't typically use to make games, no. So, but did it play on it? What What is it about it in Java, like Minecraft? It's just he just I think he just knew it. He was good in it, so oh, he built okay. it on it. Yeah, he made a couple of games as well. Aside from that, they weren't nearly as successful. He's kind of like a, he's kind of like a good. <laughs> Good game developer, but not like a really good manager Business or man. person. Yeah. <laughs> or person. Really? I don't know. I don't think he's too bad, but he does make, he comes out with controversial statements and stuff. 2.5 billion. You can do whatever you want, I suppose, at that, at that price. But I'm sure my, I'm a lot sure. of people have went off him ever since that. Really? Yeah, because he's, now he's just like, now he's just a person on Twitter who puts up controversial shit every no, so often. Okay. Like, oh, shut the fuck up, will you? <laughs> Pardon my French. I wonder if it was running like, um, was there any like anything in the clause that says he still is like a what do you call that like like a board member or something? Yeah, like, like someone that they consult I, like consultant. Yeah, for I think the game? he. I think he. Like, or did he just wipe his hands? I think he went complete like, clean break. Wow. Yeah, I think he was sick of it or something like that Jesus. as well. I mean, that's it's, it's a big crazy. payday, isn't it? Two point five billion for billion, Minecraft. Like, I'm sure Microsoft are going to make that back tenfold though. Like, yeah, I mean, Minecraft anyway. is still like, it's still massive. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Like, yeah. how it's still so popular. They're still going. Like, yeah. Some of the mm-hmm. biggest YouTube channels are still Minecraft. Yeah. You know? And kids are constantly coming up and playing. Like, I know it's on your phone. You can just give it to a kid. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Well, he deleted his Twitter account. So Good don't, for him. Don't Good try following him. Good for Twitter. Much. Yeah. Good for, Good Good for, for his family. Good for his family. Um, they have released... Sorry, I should say. Japan. I was going to say, who are they? <laughs> have <Come> released... <laughs> not uh, the, the, the country as a yeah. whole. Not, the government. <laughs> have uh, released see-through public toilets open in Tokyo parks. Okay. I've seen this. Yeah. yeah. It's actually a pretty good idea because it's glass technology um, that has been adapted so that the prospective users can inspect the cleanliness of the toilet and see if anyone is inside. And when they go in and they turn it to vacant, the glass becomes opaque. Yeah. And you can't see in. You can't see But it's just big colorful blocks. Yeah. And they're really, really nice. Yeah, it's pretty um, cool. It's like, it reminds me of like those sci-fi shows where it's like... Um, you know, they're, they're looking out the window and they're like, okay, privacy mode. And then the window just like automatically turns into this like, you know, op- like, yeah, almost oh. like a wall. And you're like, yeah. what yeah. the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool that yeah. it exists. 
Um, another piece of random news: Donald Trump hands out his uh, autograph down in. He was visiting. Oh, after Hurricane Laura. Yeah, he was visiting uh, like families and things, doing his, like his, his normal political, whatever you want to the call photo it. Photo ops. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he knew that his autographs and stuff had been selling on eBay for money, so he was heard calling over people and like families and uh, signing it, saying, "I'm not going to sign my name on it, or I'm not going to sign your name on it, so you can because sell it'll it. be worth worth less." But here you go, that'll get you ten thousand on eBay. I see. Yeah, I see. So this is, this is what the president of the United States Very is doing. Now. Very good. I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, like, yeah, you know, you look at it straight <laughs> off and you're like, that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, fair enough. But I mean, you can't really sell your brand as a president. You're not really supposed to do that. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to make money off being a yeah. president. Like, you know. But I suppose he's not thanking me doing it. I mean, what do you, re- I mean, the better way to do that is probably, you know, just give those people money. Yeah, just give them money. You're the yeah, president. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know? It's yeah. like, you can, you know, yeah, federal aid and all that mm-hmm. shit. I don't know. I don't like, pre- I don't, I really, I I have learned, not learned, I have become very, very annoyed and just fed up with Donald Trump. Like, really? I, even as a meme at this point. Yeah. Like, I, he frustrates me to no end. Yeah. And Americans, no harm to like the 50% or 40% of Americans who, who support him. Yeah. I just, <clears throat> I really have very little faith, faith in, in those people because yeah. I just, you can't, I don't care how adamant like you are that he's a good president. Like he has done so so many bad things. Like, yeah, and he's such an idiot. Has he done enough good things though to help outweigh the bad? I don't know. Uh, maybe, but I I, yeah. I just don't understand how a person who can get up and say like this virus don't have to worry about it. It's Chinese virus made in a lab and like yeah. just not just just say it. Just yeah. no proof. Just says these things. There is a fucking hell there. He's, he's got D. he's got no fucking responsibility. Like no, I know he doesn't know. He doesn't care, but like, yeah, he. Do, I mean, like, he's done some good things as well. Like, I mean, unemployment. Uh, it's obviously tank now because of COVID and stuff yeah. like. But he was helping there. But I don't think. I, I don't think it's you can get away with being an irresponsible president, like the yeah. man who c- controlled nuclear bombs. Yeah. I don't think you can get away with being an irresponsible person because you know the productivity of the country is up. Yeah, true. You know. Yeah. I think you have to. You know, I just. I, I don't know and he'll do anything he's like dismantling or like they're trying to just like uh, defund the post office because yes, they think right. they're yeah. going to be against the elections exactly yeah. and you're like it's so blatant like and he doesn't care no that it's so blatant yeah I know Cause I'm just so worried. It's because he's a businessman first and a president second. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but he's not even a good businessman. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's not an honest businessman. I don't even know. Like, I don't even know the the complete backstory of like, where his wealth and all came from. But you ever hear about the whole meme? He's like, I'm a self made man. But I had a, a one million dollar loan from my father. No. Yeah. Jeez. So you know, self made like. Yeah. But got the seed money of a million dollars. Obviously, yeah. Jesus. Nah, I don't know. I've, I went massively off Donald Trump, but I don't like talking about him either because it's a very divisive, divisive, divisive uh, topic. Anyway. It also gives him a bit of bit of time on a, on a exactly, podcast. Exactly, you know, his name is getting out there. Yeah. He's very, he's very into that as well. For our that millions kind of, of listeners, you know, there's no such thing as bad press and all that. I don't think there is such thing as bad press. Yeah, you know, there's always yeah. if your name's out there, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe we should just be controversial as yeah. all hell on this, you know. No, but I don't like that. No. We're good people. We're yeah, good people. A harsh. Yeah, we're yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, have you got any other news? I've got a local news. The majestic I... mall tree in Armagh, in our local city, is set to be cut down. The majestic mall tree. So it's the biggest tree, and it's up at the the jail, the gale end mm-hmm. of the mall, and it's set to be cut down because it's rotting. Oh. But it's one of like ten or eleven all around like the Armagh area, city area that have to be cut down now. These oh. huge, big fucking big trees. iconic trees. Apparently, it's due to like health and safety. It could fall. But like it hasn't fall fallen in like a hundred something years, so yeah. But I suppose if it is rotten, like yeah, is it a matter of time. I say just let it fall. I you suppose know? like let it go as long as it can. Yeah, maybe they could like tether it or something like that. So it yeah, falls but even if you know you can't really, there's no way you can let, let it fall that it wouldn't potentially hurt somebody. True, it's right on like the walkway, like the mile walkway. You know, and it, it kind of sucks. Like, yeah, it's all sad when you see like a like it's such a strange thing to get attached to, isn't Sorry, it? It's twenty one other. It's part of twenty one other trees. Yeah. Like that's a lot of trees that they got cut. I was, yeah. uh, Ireland is one of the most deforested. I think it is possibly, no, it's not. It's one of the most deforested. It, it possibly is the most deforested country in Europe. No way. Yeah. Um, it's got something like maybe 9% like tree cover. Mm. The lowest is Iceland. It's got 3%. Jesus. But it's a fucking rock, right? Yeah. It's a glacier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Ireland used to be like heavily, heavily forested, forested, but it's all cut down for farmland. So it all saddens me whenever we get less trees. 
But yeah, it's a strange thing to get attached to a tree. Just oh, an yeah. old tree. It's just an old tree, yeah. Dude, they're, they're, there's something majestic about them. They're so fucking big. Like, those trees could talk. Yeah. Like, the stories they'd have. The shit <laughs> they would have seen. Like, you they know. Have, you know, they've endured through all yeah. kinds. Like, they've endured through, like, either troubles and yeah. famine. world wars and all this shit. Like, you know? Famine, probably, as well. You know, like, they've been there for hundreds of years. It's so cool that yeah. something can, like, hang around. Yeah, I know. I always love that quote as well about... um. You know, and this is something back on Donald Trump that I, I I don't believe he is, but like, you know, great men are the people who like plant trees that they know they'll never sit in the shade of. Yeah. You know, plant yeah. long term yeah. trees are something that they're like long term things, and yeah. you can plant it two hundred years ago and it's still there to the, this yeah. day. You know. Yeah. Do you ever see them redwoods? Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Like they're something. That else. actually mystifies me. Like how something can like something be that big naturally like grow can that, be big. that big. They're on roids or something. Man. Yeah. Do you ever see? There's like a queen redwood of like the, it's like the queen it's like the main tree in like the redwood forest parks in california this thing is like oh my god it's just insane and like the girth yeah, yeah. alone like That's, i mean like yeah they need the girth because they're so tall yeah i don't know watched... things stay rooted like, this is something yeah as well i was reading there's like how does a tree get like water from the mm. ground to the very top like that fucking high up yeah, how does it send it up through? Yeah, it? like it's insane. How does it send enough water? Yeah, like it must be gallons and gallons throat. and gallons. Like, but anyway, that's trees. Yeah, that's uh, trees. Yeah, that's trees for you. Yeah, that is sad though. I, I, yeah, I wish there were. Well, I sad don't know. To see, yeah. Hey, my last piece of news is Elon Musk, another maniac. Yeah, I like Musk on this podcast though. Musk always brings a, talk, a good talking point. Yeah, um, kind of controversial in his own way. But uh, his most latest venture is Neuralink. Neuralink? Neuralink is what it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a startup uh, that is kind of striving towards having, like, implants in your head so you can, mm. like, interact with computers and AI and stuff like that. Like, you know, forward-thinking shit. Scary shit as well. It's crazy, yeah. But you could have, like, a chip in your head that could have you do math. What? Yeah, shit like that. That's that's, that's not where he's at at the minute. No. At the minute, yeah. The the big news is that he's put computer chips into pigs' brains. Mm-hmm. The idea being that it's like a way to prove that this works. And has it? Uh, it has, yeah. So he has three three pigs with two coin sized implants each. So they've got two implants in their mm-hmm. brain, size of a coin. He described them as happy, a healthy, happy, and indistinguishable from a normal pig. Um, the neural link that they have is able to predict the animal's limb movements during treadmill runs at high accuracy uh, using the data like, retrieved from the implant so they're able to like know what their body is doing yeah. based on like the implants in their brain it's, it's, it's quite mad uh, he describes the sensor as a Fitbit in your skull with I, tiny I wires I read that yeah Fitbit yeah. in your skull was the the phrase that stuck out to me that's he also said I could have a neural link right now and you wouldn't know mysteriously he, why does he always do yeah. shit like that like, he know? knows what he's at he knows yeah. what he's at um, but yeah it's pretty mad and like the goal of this being to get it into humans and you can like interact with computers and you can use data and imagine that was used though for like war imagine like, soldiers hacking, yeah imagine like hacking into someone's brain making them do shit oh god is this where we're going it's like KGB agents yeah it's yeah it's sleeper agents brain, yeah except they're like having brainwashed you can just take out a Xbox controller yeah. and fucking what is go. that what is that movie and they have a chip in them. I don't know. Well, Not blade chip in them. Potentially. But those are robots. Yeah, but it's the same thing, isn't it? Kind of, but they you don't control them. They have the free will-ish. Ish. Hmm. Anyway. I don't know what I was thinking of. Heavy, heavy stuff when you get into it. Like, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. the, the, the headline is pigs with fucking chips in their brain. What a weirdo. <laughs> Potato chips in the brain. You'll be sending them to space next. Yep. Yeah, it's SpaceX. He actually, I, I read the other day, it was like, never forget that we Musk has a a car that is orbiting yeah, space it's just at the out minute. There. And it's like, whenever I read it, which was like last week, it had just passed by like these satellites in space. This fucking car. Like, it's insane. What? <laughs> he just stuck it up there. Just to prove that, you know, that they yeah. can do it. Yeah. Yeah, I love like SpaceX. I love yeah. and his contribution and like, sort of yeah. leadership on that. I yeah. love some of the other stuff I'm not so hot, I'm not so hard on. Yeah, it's some weird shit. Um, that us for news this week. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> um, it's time to get into the main topic of this week. But before we do, I uh, just want to say a quick thank you to everybody who tunes in weekly to the podcast. If this is your first podcast, you're very very welcome. 
Um, you can find the video version of the podcast over at youtube.com slash empty promise podcast. And if video is no good for you or you wish to take us with you on the go, you can find us on any podcast hosting service, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, whatever, whatever. It's, 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 it's all there. It's everywhere. It's a, we just, we, that's another We're example. We're like a bod rash. Throwing, <laughs> that's exactly what we're like. Yeah. We're like a real bod rash. Um, you can get in contact with us through any of our social media. Just search for the handle Empty Promise Podcast or our email, which is Empty Promise Podcast at gmail.com. Um, with questions, queries, comments, ideas for topics, shows, all that. we love all that. Everything, love everything, 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 yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. Getting it. Actually, I say that. I have to bring this up. Mm. Apparently, one of our listeners. Um, this is how I found out about the Dyatlov Pass the whole thing that had been um, blown, blown wide open. <laughs> um, tagged. I think it was your. I don't think it was Empty Promise. I think it might have been your Twitter. Oh, right. With the, with the story. Oh, dear. And we just... <laughs> oh, <laughs> and we just... <laughs> I apologize. You know? I haven't I have on Twitter in a while. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I made the case that, you know, we just... We just... We're we're like, not, we're... Get in contact, you yeah. know? Come on, guys. Just email us. Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Get yeah. in contact. If someone does, and we just fucking completely blank them. But, but in saying <laughs> that, ghost because phone. we now have this, because we now have that information, we're set to do a completely separate episode on yep. those things. So yeah, Dial of Paz episode. and Golden State Murder are both coming back with uh, their own show. Come so, back in a big way. So there you go. Now you get your own show out of it, I yeah. guess. Um, that was you. You made that happen. But I had to bring that up, so thank you. Um, right, as you may have guessed from the title of this week's uh, topic is on the Loch Ness monster. Nessie, is oh, she Nessie. real? Is she yeah. not real? I mean, the biggest mystery yeah. in the world yeah. of all time. Yeah, it's probably not this, but mystery of history, I say. Myst- the mystery of history. Actually, like I was shocked by how much history there is to of Nessie, the myth of Nessie, yeah, and, and the the, the legend, yeah. I, I was really genuinely shocked. Yeah. Um, I always thought it was a very modern thing, like maybe like in the, the 70s or so. Mm-hmm. That is when it blew up and that's when it got super popular. But It goes back to like uh, like Saints time. Yeah, like... Columba. Yeah, 565. Yeah. Jesus. Like AD 565. AD. Like 500 years after Christ. Yeah. After like, death. After, after Dominoes. After Dominoes. After Dominion. That's what it stands for, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's like, it's like an- oh. Anglo Domini or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Some shit I got there. Well, there you go. You learned it's, a, it's before Christ and after death. Everyone knows that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. the easy way to know it. Yeah. But yeah, 565 AD is when the, the first like river yeah. monster, quote unquote yeah, monster, the, was the, seen. The, the myth. And I think it was actually in, in, in the river, not the actual lock. It was. It was yeah. in the river. We get into that a wee bit. See, we know our shit here. We've we done our research. Yeah. Okay. Five minutes before the show started. <laughs> no, this is something I've been interested in for a long time. And any chance I get, like, if there's a video on YouTube or if there's shows on TV about Loch Ness, like, I'm I'm a, I'm a watch it because, you know, yeah, please, I'll take a top up, sir. Um, and one of the one of the bad. <laughs> oh, oh, you taught me up to the brim, sir. I to get you, <laughs> you some just ice. Kept going. <laughs> I you just kept going. So I give it a little, a last minute kind of <laughs> tilt, and Jesus, she fell up right and quick. A last minute ditch to, to get ice into my glass. Well, we're gonna have a problem if we need to take a pause for a pee break. For pee break, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, we'll we'll be fine. <laughs> I can just, um, I can explain why these cokes are not from, yeah, <laughs> where we think they're from. Um, but yeah, Nessie. Um, Loch Ness mm. I want to start there because I got some interesting facts about yeah. Loch Ness okay that kind of Scotland yeah yeah yeah. that was one thing I was like Loch Ness Loch Ness you, like, I'm sure most people have heard of the Loch Ness monster mm-hmm. but if you haven't mm-hmm. it's in Scotland it's in Scotland Scottish Highlands mm. yeah. yeah way out in the sticks yep and um, this this loch alone or what I know if there's any like Americans listening and they're like oh we have lakes that are like uh, 50 miles long by like oh, yeah. 20 like miles deep Lake Superior like, yeah. which is like I think Ireland could fit in there yeah okay it's not that big okay, okay. but in we have a different of... concept of lakes <laughs> over here right <laughs> but in terms of like European size I think it's like the second biggest in Europe oh is it actually yeah, yeah. yeah I think so um, but to put it into perspective it's not um, the deepest lock in Scotland it's the second second but um, it is the largest body of water in the UK meaning it can hold all the water from all the lakes in England and Wales put together in Loch Ness. I thought I thought Loch Ness was the biggest one in, in UK. Loch Ness, yeah, Ireland, our one, yeah. Uh, well, it, technically, it's in the UK. It might be. It, I mean, maybe they're just it, talking Britain, mainland. Maybe. I mean, it's not the deepest lock. It's not the deepest lock in Scotland. Mm. Uh, nor is it the largest by surface area. That's just Scotland, though. Oh yeah, not yeah. Europe. You know. 
Um, but it holds the most water, is what we're saying. It, it holds the most water. Right, okay. An actual fact I heard about this on a TV show on like Discovery Channel was you can take the entire Earth's population and lie them down flat, like on top of one and, another, fit and fit them into lock. That, that's crazy. That's a, that's a big, that's, you know that's that a big lock. It's ample room for a creature to hide. <laughs> Yeah. yeah see where we're going see, yeah. yeah point number one see remember what, that remember that because we're gonna come back to that see later. what side of the fence we're all on here yeah um point number two it's pitch black yeah murky it's pitch black yeah because of the peat it, like peat. all the runoff from the rivers like it's all like peat sediment in the water yeah. if like, you're american again peat is like turf turf i don't even know if they yeah. have maybe turf. peat is the correct term uh peat yeah i think so. it's like it's like really dense mud yeah murky but it's like kind yeah. of fuel it's like, yeah, it's we like, use it as fuel here for like in fires and stuff. Yeah. Uh, we use torf because central heating's for women. <laughs> oh, <dear>. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, the PD particles mean that the visibility under the, the water. PD particles. Yeah. I love <laughs> like, it. <laughs> <laughs> Get that up in the wall. PD yeah. particles <laughs> is extremely poor, um, which again, excellent conditions. You know, they're gonna hide somewhere, and it never freezes. Okay. It never freezes. It stays at a balmy five degrees. Is that because it's got like ocean water flowing in or it's something? It's because yeah. Th- well, this is another point. It's got we've got access to uh, the ocean, but mm-hmm. we'll get to that later. But it never freezes. Um, I don't know. It's just chilly all the time. I don't know why. I think it's. I think it could be that's, to do. That's warm, probably for a lake. I think that could be to do with the PD particles. The PD particles. Yeah, I genuinely do. I think it could be something like that. Like oh, it, it changes it, like the pH or yeah, something yeah, with the yeah, water something. or some shit like that. Oh yeah. Does pH depend on freezing? No, no, it doesn't. But it's like you know, if you have like salty water, that would lower it or higher. It or oh yeah, like right that. So yeah, that yeah. got my affect it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, yeah. The ocean thing is is kind of that's interesting as well. Yeah. I would imagine because ocean water is warmer. Sorry, I apologize for that. <laughs> I way overfilled that. That's my bad. It's so cold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even thirsty. I'm just being polite. Um. Um. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it also sits on uh, the Great Fault Line. The Great Fault Line. The Great Fault Line. I didn't know this. Which was a line formed like 400 million years ago. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So it really goes so back. we can go back prehistoric here if we want, you know, <laughs> which I'm not saying it, anything. It's like Godzilla. These things like crawl out of the Earth's crust. Exactly. Maybe maybe Nessie just swam in through the fault line. Just like found him. a nice way. But yeah, this is what I meant to say about the whole temperature. Colder water provides so many nutrients. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, like creatures sea life fish animals they love cold water for the nutrients so there's like an abundance of fish and and life and food and algae and nutrients mm-hmm. so anything about the nutrients. you could survive in this like yeah, these yeah, things yeah. could survive in this water so eh, you know, you know no. there's Just lots saying. of eels and stuff as well there's loads of stuff like that yeah exactly yeah so there, there's some uh, there's some facts about the, the actual lock itself lock being a gaelic word for lake there you go yeah. you know Jesus, we don't just we're, we're not just mispronouncing it. <laughs> no, Lake Ness. I love the way it's like that's the one thing that's stuck around, like the Irish language or the Gaelic Scots language. It's mm-hmm. completely gone, basically. Yeah, but we still got lock. Yeah, so we're all right. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. The Lake Ness monster just sounds wrong. No, it's the lock, Ness doesn't monster. it? Yeah, no. So where about you want to start with this with the whole Nessie thing? You know, well, yeah, I guess want, the history of it. The go back, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, that's what we were saying. Is like, re- really, in my mind, it, it's something that's from the 70s. I was wrong about that. Yeah. It's actually first became like, popular in, like, you know, common, like, knowledge in, like, the 1930s, 1934. Mm-hmm. It's kind of when it first took off. Was that the, was that the photo, the surgeon's photo? That, it was around that time. So yeah. that there was, like, a big, there was, a, there was a, like, a hot, it was, like, a hot spot of activity around that time for whatever reason. Um, But, like, the first, the first sightings, the first, like, modern okay the first modern discussion of a sighting was actually in 1870 right but that that wasn't like reported about until 1930 so 50 years 60 years later jesus it wasn't reported but that was like the first like sort of recorded sighting okay someone wrote this down like i saw something strange it was from a d mckenzie so he's like he's like the sort of uh he's the origin of like the modern myth of uh of loch ness Uh, he just he claimed to have seen something wriggling and churning in the water in, in 19, 1870 apologies and that was not published until 1934 okay but there was sort of some newspapers that were publishing about a creature in the lock before 1934 so mm-hmm. there was the reports and there's been ta- like there have been you know, like verbal like discussion yeah, yeah. about 
a, a monster or a, a creature in Loch Ness like well before this yeah. like kind of like kind of like common vernacular like you know like people local people would know folklore yeah folklore exactly yeah. people would be like oh that house is haunted or yeah. that lake has yeah. a monster in it yeah. essentially they have all this so this was like kind of well established like 1800s we're wow. talking here it wasn't until 1934 that it got like kind of widespread yeah. popularity um and that was that was mainly because of um uh, 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 sorry, I can't think here. Mm-hmm. A newspaper article yeah. was written about it in the Inverness Courier okay. called Strange Spectacle in Loch Ness. Ooh. So this is kind of like, this is like the origin of this becoming popular. 2nd of May, 1933. Um, the creature, this is uh, verbose, this is word for word from the, from the article. The creature dis- disported itself, rolling and plunging for fully a minute, its body resembling that of a wheel, and the water cascading and churning like a simmering cauldron. Soon, however, it disappeared in a boiling mass of foam. Both onlookers confessed that there was something uncanny about the whole thing, for they realised that here was no ordinary denizen of the depths, because apart from its enormous size, the beast, in taking the final plunge, sent out waves that were big enough to have been caused by a passing steamer. Ooh. So yeah, by Denizen like of the depths, I like that. That's, that's, an that's ama- a great title. That's an amazing little snippet. The I Denizen love that. Of the depths, Jesus. so well written. Um, but yeah, Loch Ness has for generations been credited with some, some sort of like concept of having a fearsome looking monster There's in something it. in there. So people have always kind of like talked about, it. but this was the first thing that kind of like kicked it off. Mm-hmm. Was this description of it. like in a wheel like monster? So like that gives you. I can't kind of idea about the scale of this thing. Yeah, right? it's big. Yeah, big. it's big. Could have been a wheel. That Could was my initial thought yeah. was because it does have a link to the. That's right. It had to access the ocean. to the ocean. Yeah. But uh, that was in nineteen. That was eighteen seventies. Reported nineteen thirty. Mm-hmm. So it's not first hand. It's quite a bit. You know, it's fairly old. It could have been embellished upon or whatever. But it, <laughs> do you want to hear craziness? It's what we talked about. Like, um, five hundred and sixty-five. Five sixty-five. Uh, Columba, Saint Columba. Saint Columba. Yeah. Uh, came apparently face to face with the beast mm. um, an Irish monk yeah when it uh, quote when it reared its ugly head and tried to eat his, or his Columba's servant um, there have been various accounts of the monster sightings since then but uh, yeah it goes right back to 565 being a being a man of God Columba was able to stop the beast from eating that's when right. It was um, but this eating. was this was in the river nest. That'd be right. That's right. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's all. It's kind of it's very. Like, I mean, it's pretty contested to be fair. This is a very old document yeah. talking about written in five. It was written in five sixty five yeah. by a guy called Adam Man. Yeah. He was like an Irish. He's a hagiographer. Yeah. Which means you probably know that from yeah you know, from religion. Yeah. So he writes about saints. Yeah. So Saint Columba. So he's writing about this. That happened a long time ago mm-hmm. in 565, and then we're only hearing about it now. So it's you know could have been warped beyond yeah. all perception. But yeah, yeah they specifically mentioned the River Ness, yeah, and this like water beast. And there was a man swimming in the river when he was attacked by this water beast that exactly. mauled him um, and dragged him under the water. They had tried to rescue him, but um, in a boat, but he was killed. It's so, like that's 565. Um, Obviously, there's not like solid evidence of anything. You no. know, it's not like physical evidence. Um, no. The other I mean, thing is like about like hagiographies, mm-hmm. which is what this is, is that they tend to make the person they're talking about look godly. They're biased. Yeah. They're, yeah. yeah it's a bi- so, you know, it wouldn't be opinion. unheard of to say completely unrelated to Loch Ness that he summoned a water beast and managed to stop it. Yeah. And like water beasts were kind of like the, you ever hear like the, the Kelpie myth? It's like a very common thing like King Arthur. Right. All had no, copies, which are just like like lake dwellers like lake, dwell- lake dwelling lake dwelling creatures right. some of them are like good some of them are bad etc so it could have been you know descended from that mm-hmm. um, but it is really weird that the river Ness has like a a myth yeah. a really popular myth yeah. you know because St. Columbus like, that's a well known work um, you know it's pretty interesting could have been the root of the myth or it could have been the root of the truth yeah I mean yeah it had to start from somewhere yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like could have went that far back. Could these things have been? Well, I would be like, and I, I know it goes back that far, but you know, something could have could have eaten a man in a river or dragged yeah. him down. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could have been currents. It could have been knows. currents. You yeah, know? true, true. It could have been currents. It could have been. Yeah, well, not we'll get into it because we're gonna have our own opinions of what what it could be. 
I guess. Um, but yeah, that's how far back we're talking about here. Yeah. Sixth century. Like that's, that's a long time like ago. To think yeah. about. That's the start of the start of the myth, allegedly or p- yeah. potentially. Um, I have like a list of like the the, the main sightings, main sightings yeah. that I can go through. Like, these are all people who've claimed to have seen it and like, what they've reported that they have seen. And yeah, we talk about th- there's the famous photograph as well that everyone knows about. That's that's the that that's the one the main one I think the surgeon's photo. The is surgeon's one. photograph shows yeah. the uh, the head as such. The little it's like a little, what would you call that? It's like, like the neck, the neck, neck and the head. Yeah. Kind of thing, uh, in in the water, it was disproved though, wasn't it? It was disproved, yeah. yeah. Although there's there's some like it's kind of it, it's a... well known to be a fake now. It's kind of well regarded yeah. as a fake. There are other pictures that aren't nearly as well published because they're not they're not obvious and they're not clear. Mm-hmm. But like there's some really compelling stuff that just never gets talked about. Do you have a George Spicer's or Spicer's account there? I have it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great account. I think, do you want to read it? Yeah, I I can cover that. Yeah. Um, yeah, George Spicer, 1933. Yeah. Him and his wife. Yeah. This one is actually, yeah, mad. This is crazy. Uh, he claims to have seen a most, extra- a most extraordinary form of animal cross the road in front of their car. Yeah. They described the creatures having a large body about four feet high and 25 feet long. That's crazy. 25 feet. Yeah. They describe a long, wavy, narrow neck, slightly thicker than an elephant's trunk, and as long as the, and as long as the 10 to 12 foot width of the road. They saw no limbs. It lurched across the road towards the lock, twenty yards away, leaving a trail of broken undergrowth in its wake. Like the fact this crossed a road in front yeah. of the car, that, so it, 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 it's now land dwelling. Exactly. This is this was what kind of blew it up for me because it's like, a it's massive. Yeah. B they saw it right in front of them. It wasn't like in yeah. a lake and far no, away. No, no. It, it was crossed right in front the of them. road. And C it was on land. Yeah. Which it didn't seem to have legs, so maybe it's not a land dweller, but no. it can obviously work on Move land. On land. Like a, a giant bit. snake? Yes, or like a serpent or something like that. But like, what, 25 feet? Fuck seven seven yeah. meters, just over seven meters long. That's like anaconda snake. And four feet, like, high. Four feet, okay, yeah, right now. Like four, four feet, feet high, high, like up to this table, like yeah. higher. Like, that's fucking well, massive. Higher, yeah. That's huge. Yeah, like, that is insane. Uh, cross right in front of their car, and then into the water, and away it goes. And this was this was at night um, as well. Interesting as well is, a lot of people claim that the there's a road that went beside this here and it was upgraded in the 30s. Okay. So a lot of the sightings came after the 30s because there was this like main road that was going by and a lot of people were like we're seeing driving past and seeing the lake. Right. And they claim that this is why there were so many sightings. But there was always a road there and there's and there's there's obviously been sightings since before. I have one here from 1988. 1888, sorry. Uh, a Mason a Mason Alexander McDonald uh, sighted a large stubby legged animal surfacing from the lock and propelling itself within 50 yards of the shore he described it as looking like a salamander so like a lizard yeah. kind of a thing which would kind of fall in with like the long like yeah the, the kind of shape that the four feet off the floor spicers though maybe if it was like standing you know it's head to the ground might be like four feet I don't know um, I've never I, seen a giant salamander I <laughs> said yeah like the is in the water. I'm thinking like I'm thinking like crocodile, crocodilian proportions. Yeah, there, that's what I'm know? kind of thinking. Um, Arthur Grant, 1934, uh, a motorcyclist, he claimed to have nearly hit the creature while approaching uh, Abrakan near the northeastern end of the lake at about 1 a.m. Uh, according to Grant, it had a small head attached to a long neck. Uh, the creature saw him and crossed the road back to the lock. Uh, Grant, this is interesting. He was a veterinary student, so and he kind of kicked off this idea that he described it as a cross between a seal and a plesiosaur. Yep. And a plesiosaur is like a long, long extinct dinosaur. Yeah. Water. Sea dwelling. Sea dwelling dinosaur. dinosaur yeah. So him being a veterinary, he would have kind of experience of that. Yeah. So once he described it as a plesiosaur, that like, that is like, to this day, this is what the, the Loch Ness Monster is allegedly described as, as a plesiosaur. Yeah. It's stuck with it and people, that's why like the whole connection to dinosaurs is it. Ancient plesiosaur is that somehow that, that survived. Never died out. I, mean, I mean, it's not, that's not the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. I mean, crocodiles. Crocodiles, Komodo dragons, exactly. all still exist from dinosaurs. You exactly, know? yeah. So like, I mean, like, yeah. Why not? Why Why couldn't something have existed in the ocean? Just why wouldn't we have seen it somewhere else? And more of them. Yeah, exactly. You know. 
how and are they only in Loch Ness? Or how mm-hmm. what about Loch Ness has let them Loch Ness, Loch Ness has let them survive? You know. Well, that's what I think. I mean, it's it's dark, it's cold, it's full of nutrients, it's a good hiding space, it's got access to and from the ocean. Exactly. Yeah. You it's, know, there's yeah. probably there's more than likely like cave systems under into like the in like in the water all under Scotland. Yeah, that's great. That's where they live. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. It's yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Please, so please restore that that like that description stuck. Yeah, and it's it shows up again, and again, and again. Yeah, all over. And the Taylor film, you got that one. The Taylor film, no, yeah. actually, twenty ninth of May, thirty eight, South African tourist G E Taylor filmed something in the lock for three minutes on a sixteen mil color film. The film was obtained by popular science writer Maurice Burton, who did not show it to other researchers. A single frame was published in his 1961 book, The Elusive Monster. His analysis concluded, though, it was a floating object, not an animal. Maurice Burton is actually really interesting. He shows up all over the place. Really? In the the, the discussions about the the lock. He is one of the biggest, I think he's a big critic of it. Like, he doesn't believe there's a Loch Ness monster. But he's quite scientific, and he always tries to find, like, the logical explanation of what we're seeing and what these things are showing. Um, and he obviously wrote books about it and he probably made a living off of it but he shows up again and again and it's interesting that he didn't show the film or didn't publish the film he kind of kept it to himself yeah so i but, don't know i mean they've done they've done sonar they've used sonar and everything in this the game, sonar stuff they? is so interesting yeah like it's so uh, we're gonna get to that as yeah, well. yeah that is yeah. so fucking good so we're still going just with the, the sightings here yeah you know, we can talk about the sonar if you, yeah, if you want to move on to that now no i, I like these sight- there's there's loads like it goes right up to like what 2011 yeah 2000 like 2007 the holmes video 26th of may 2007 55 55 year old laboratory technician gordon holmes videotaped what he said was quote this jet black thing about 14 meters long moving fairly fast in the water uh, adrian shine a marine biologist at the loch ness 2000 center in drum con how would you pronounce the rocket? Yeah. Described the footage as amongst, quote, the best footage he had ever seen. BBC Scotland broadcast the video on the 29th of May 2007. Um, Shrine was also interviewed and suggested that the footage was an otter seal or water bird. Otter? How the fuck is it? It's 14 meters long. Yeah. How big are otters? Uh, no, not that big. Right? Otters maybe what size this table at most. That doesn't seem make sense to yeah. me. Giant eel. That one eel, comes eel up to up me there. a lot. Um, I think you're... eels are one of those creatures that can just keep getting bigger and bigger. Did you ever hear of Jeremy Wade, the fishing guy? No. Okay, so Jeremy Wade did this show, used to do this show called River Monsters, where he just used to catch like the biggest, most bizarre creatures all over the world. And he caught them? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's oh. like a professional fisherman. And he went on then to do a show that was only aired like last year, the year before, where he's like looking at creatures of the deep. Now, he went to Loch Ness um, and he concluded that uh, the sightings are either more than likely either a giant eel that, as you say, can literally keep growing as long as they have a sustained like food to sustain food, them, yeah. or a giant catfish. I've heard about the catfish. Catfish as well. can grow enormous. Fuck. Like they can grow huge, and they just lie on like their their bottom feeders. They will just lie on the ah. on, on the on the on the like the depths, yeah, the, yeah. On the, the just the bottom, and just lie there. Like. Like, no, nope. would never see. But then like. Things. See the other thing or is or sturgeon, a sturgeon fish as well. See, yeah, can grow the thing huge. that confused me is that them fish don't really like surface. Like so, like the sightings of these have always been like mm-hmm. up on land or surfacing true, and stuff. True. So it's like it'd be strange for like an eel or something like that to come to surface unless it was I don't know like pursuing prey or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. But the likes of catfish, they would just be bottom feeders. They would just you know see, eel. Eel is a strange one. Eel, eel kind of like I, I kind of like the idea but of it kind of ring it kind of sticks true because like it's long and it can get big and mm-hmm. stuff like that it doesn't explain the crossing the road thing right? no I don't know why an eel would be on land it could be a snake a water snake could be snake. like a strange variant of a, of a giant eel like yeah. that has legs yeah, yeah. or something like we've that we've seen water snakes snakes you know that can uh, not around these these parts obviously in more like tropical waters you get like snakes that can go on land and then just back into the ocean the way they go so it could like it could be any of those things really like, yeah but I mean, like, some of these other things are just, like, too strange. Um, th- like, w- let's see, like, one of the other sightings that I was going to talk about. Uh, bu- 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 well, there's the sonar readings, yeah, mm-hmm. that detected a uh, fucking... Yeah, a thing moving at, like, like, 10 knots. 
like 10 knots. 10 knots. Which is like faster than like they'd expect like a catfish or anything like that to move. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, it's like it's just a strange thing. It doesn't really fit into any like defined category of animal. Yeah. Like, which is why it keeps changing and people keep saying, it's, oh, it's eels, you know, it's a, it's a sturgeon or it's an otter or it's a catfish or something mm. like that. I also read reports that catfish don't really do well in this type of water. Like it's not really ideal for them. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's okay. like unlikely to be like a large fish, like a catfish. Or right. A, okay. Or a thing. But then it has to be something yeah. right you know if they're if they're saying if they're saying like oh the all these sightings are like a natural thing like yeah. there's something big in this water that people keep seeing um talk we talked about the sur- sur- surgeon's photograph a bit there i guess we might as well cover this because it was like it, it was one of the things that just blew up yeah. and got people like super interested yeah. in in Loch, Ness in, in Loch Ness and the monster it's the photo that you see all over the world like the people have in their rooms and stuff I think the photo's class even if it is a fake it's just yeah. it's so mysterious it's, it's iconic it. yeah it's iconic because it's like it's like the only clear evidence fo- footage of it. It, it I I probably I do believe that it's a fake mm-hmm. you know um, just from everything we know about it now but you've seen you've almost definitely seen the photo before um, it'll be up on probably on the thumbnail of this video yeah if you want to check that out on YouTube but it was taken in 1934. It was published in the Daily Mail. Right. And it was published by a guy called Robert Kenneth Wilson, who was a, a London gynecologist. But because he didn't want his name associated with the picture, which is also the first thing that makes oh, me... Oh, in our video, sorry. Yeah. The first thing that's kind of somewhat suspicious yeah. is that he didn't want his name associated with the picture. Right. It was just referred to as the surgeon's photograph because he didn't want his name put beside it because he was obviously like a prominent guy in London. For 60 years, the photo was considered evidence of the monster's existence, although a lot of skeptics did dismiss it. Some people said, oh, it's driftwood, or it's interesting. An, an, an elephant is an common An elephant, I heard that Because it looks like well, the yeah. trunk of an elephant a little bit. An underwater elephant. An underwater elephant. But that's actually an interesting thing. They mentioned that in the 1930s, there and thereabouts, there was a circus. No, genuinely, there was a circus that was like near, in one of the nearby towns, and apparently they would like take their elephants to be in the lock no way yeah so an elephant would like there has been an elephant in that lock wading in washing and right possibly this that was like a not, it's not very serious because yeah. obviously this guy would have seen mm-hmm. an elephant walk in yeah. and out yeah but you know what i mean like you wouldn't just see the this thing wouldn't just pop up and then disappear the elephant would drown if that happened have you ever heard of the greenland sharks no again from jeremy weed i found this out All right so Greenland sharks are like these sharks that live obviously up in Greenland. They live in these lakes, but they are like the bottom, but they live in the coldest waters in pitch black and they can like eat like one meal and then be sustained. They're like crocodiles be sustained for ages. Right. But the thing about these is they, as long as they have food, they'll continue to grow. But they, the oldest one that they've caught like on earth at the minute dates back to like four or 500 years old. These things live for like four or 500 years. And that was one of the one of the thoughts that could have been a Greenland shark because these things grow huge, and they live in any water. They live in cold water, sorry, and you know it could be around for years and, years and years. Exactly. And do they ever surface? Have they no. been known to surface? No. It'd be highly highly irregular for these things to surface. So I think they're pretty much blind. So quickly. Yeah, because they're in darkness yeah. anyway. They don't need yeah. ice really. They wouldn't really cross a road down. The Greenland sharks are oh, not true. Those crossings true. could yeah. be, they could be missed, you know, they could be, that actually was an otter yeah. or an eel or something like that. Still, it's a big fucking otter at four feet high. Yeah. 21 feet I don't really long. believe the otter one, like, it's too fucking mad for me. Um, But, back to the, the surgeon's photograph. Mm-hmm. We talked about, like, it's, it's commonly referred to as a hoax. The reason that, that it's kind of known to be a fake now is because there was actually, like, a whole description of what was done mm-hmm. and by and all of the key players were all named. So Wilson um, and his, like, Wilson was involved, but the, the, the whole thing was planned. It was a planned hoax, and it was done by a guy called, um, sorry, I can't find his goddamn name here. Okay. What was his name? We'll just search oh, for Sorry. Name. Yeah, uh, it was a guy who worked for the Daily Mail, right. and he had spotted he thought he had discovered nessie's footprints you heard about this no so basically he thought he had found nessie's footprints up near Loch Ness, and he kind of got pictures of it and he was going to publish it in the daily mail it turns out that was a fake and that was done by a guy they took it to like some uh, like zoologist or something uh-huh. like that 
and they were like those are hip, hip, hippopotamus feet right so it, had, it turns out it had been done by a guy who had gotten like a mould of a hip, hippopotamus foot stuck it on the end of his umbrella and then just made indentations wow. in the dirt and they took pictures of it and they tried to sell it or whatever and this guy had thought he had found something significant but it was obviously yeah. a massive fame and they ridiculed him for it so he was annoyed with his employer the Daily Mail that they'd done this so this is why he decides to get back at them by pulling a hoax of his own. Right. So he involves a couple of other people. Essentially, they buy a toy submarine out of yeah. Woolworths. Yeah. Yeah. Buy a toy submarine out of Woolworths. Mm. There's this guy who's kind of like talented with wood. Mm -hmm. He puts together the, the, the arm the looking thing, arch. the yeah, top of it. Yeah. They go in, they put it in the water, they take a bunch of photographs. Apparently, the kind of like, I forget what it's called, but the guy who like kind of is in charge of looking after the yeah. lake, he comes along to see what they're doing and they kind of like, right, panic they, they sink the thing they say they kicked it in under the water and it's probably still there to this day right and um, took their pictures and went they asked wilson they give the pictures to wilson knowing that he was kind of like interested in like photography and stuff like that and then he brought it to the daily mail because it wouldn't be linked to the yeah. guy who works the daily mail yeah. and then this got published and exploded and years and years and years later then they revealed it down and we figured it was it. yeah um so by 1989 um it's it's it was revealed in a book called the surgeon's photo exposed that it was a that it was a fake um i kind of ended that but obviously that doesn't really get publicized that well like a lot of people will still look in that picture and say that's the picture that that's is the, the real picture, picture you know you know it, the maybe it's like a double cross like they know that maybe there is something there and they didn't want they don't want all this publicity and shit and they were like you know maybe. what no we faked it let's just drop the whole thing yeah you know i don't know I, why I, they did I, do that. I just think because the guy who worked for the Daily Mail, that, yeah. you know, I'd say he probably did fake it. Um, and they were probably trying to cash in because it was big. They had blown up at that time. Yeah. Know, it was big. Um, there, was a din there was another film in 1960, Tim Dinsdale. It's called The Lock? No. Uh, what? There's a film just called The Lock. Oh, well, this is like a... Like he, like he recorded it himself. Oh, like sure. like oh you mean film. a film? I thought you meant like yeah. a film film. Um, Aeronautical engineer Tim D Tim Dinsdale filmed a hump that left a wake crossing Loch Ness in 1960. A lot of people were skeptical about this, and the hump was probably just a boat. Um, and when they like increased the contrast on the video, mm -hmm. they say that you can see a man in the boat. <laughs> right. So it wasn't a very good fake. But 1993 documentary, um, Discovery done by just you know the Discovery Channel. Yeah. They digitally enhanced the film. Mm -hmm. And one of the persons who was enhancing the film noticed a shadow in the negative, which was not ob obvious in the developed film. By enhancing and overlaying frames, he found what appeared to be the rear body of a creature under the water. So while they were looking at the hoax, they seen a creature or something else under the water? They seen like a really faint... You could only see it in the negatives. You couldn't see it in the developed film. Yeah. But you could see the faint outline of a creature under the water. So if it was a boat, yeah. why is so much of the boat underwater? Yeah. Um, Ooh, the guy says before I saw the film I thought the Loch Ness monster was a load of rubbish having done the enhancement I'm not so sure Ooh. so he would kind of got convinced by by this one um, and then yeah you mentioned already the home video in 2007 so like there's a whole range from 1930 from 18 from 565 yeah, right through, through the 1800s yeah. through up to the modern day um, people believing that they're seeing these things exactly the next big thing for me, mm -hmm. and it happened kind of in the middle of all this. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. It actually fascinates me. There was this guy, uh, Rhines. Have you heard about him, Chris? No. Oh, it's just, it's just killed my page. Oh. Um, okay, I'm going to go take a quick break. Yeah. Take a five yeah. minute break. You want, you want to take a pee? Yeah. We're back. back. We're ready. Yeah, I think I was about to talk about the kind of like, searches and like the people who've like not so much the people who've dedicated their lives but the people who've put like serious effort into trying to find the Loch Ness Monster. Ness, right? yeah. This is the thing that surprised me most about it because I thought I thought most people just assumed it was ah it's they're seeing aliens or they're seeing something like that and they just assumed it was a myth or but no people are genuinely it. dedicated as to finding what's in the depth yeah mm. and like not just like people who are like like conspiracies and like mysteries and stuff mm -hmm. like that. like scientists like people who like genuinely like are playing like using like really advanced technology yeah. putting like money pouring money into it like, i was so surprised people who like made genuine serious efforts to try and find this yeah they didn't wasn't one of the searches i don't know if you're gonna get to it but like they took like a rake of boats the whole way across, like the width of Loch Ness, Jesus. all with sonar, and just did a full sweep. 
the I whole did not way know through. That. Yeah. Like the, the effort. Like vessels the whole way across, all like pinging off each other, like sonar pinging off Jeez each other. Yeah. Christ. That's amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, they went the the, the, the coordination there and the manpower. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Like I have a little bit here about um you probably read about the Loch Ness phenomena phenomena investigation bureau mm. did you read about this Mm-mm. the lnpib nice uh, existed from 1962 to 1972 which is basically a society it only existed for 10 years it only existed for 10 years it was formed by a guy called norman collins right um and politician david james peter peter scott and constance white so basically these men grouped together make this like little like investigation team right uh, to study Loch Ness and to identify the creature known as the Loch Ness monster or to determine the causes of reports of it so they wanted to find out what's behind it mm-hmm. yeah the society's name was later shortened to the Loch Ness Investigation Bureau <laughs> LNIB <laughs> it was disbanded in 1972 it only lasted for 10 years but from 1965 to 1962 it had a caravan camp and a viewing platform set up at uh, Akahanet mm-hmm. and it sent observers to other locations up and down the loch um, basically to send them all around to observe yeah. to try and find out yeah. what was happening yeah. uh, it was mainly self-fund, self-funded Funded. volunteers yeah. so they were getting people from across the country to come up watch the lock and see if they could find anything they had film cameras telescopic lenses yeah. you know they were yeah, it's a, a serious operation job, like, yeah. uh, according to the 1969 annual report it had 1,030 members Jesus. only 588 were from the UK what? Which surprises me. So people pulling people from all over the people world, over America, the world. all over Europe. Yeah. Jesus. So they're, they're already paying. People just dedicated. I'd say a lot of them were just paying to keep the bureau up and running. Up, yeah. And they were registered members, but they were never actually going there. I don't wow. Think. But still incredible. Like, yeah. You know, it has this worldwide appeal, even in the seventies, before the internet, right? You know, this is. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Like they had this. Right enough. Yeah. Appeal. That was your research. You just had to go out and and do it. You know. You know. It's crazy. Um. I think, yeah, this is the one, the, the 1967-1968 sonar study where they had the boats mm-hmm. just going across. They identified multiple targets. One was probably a school of fish, but others moved in a way not typical of schools at yeah. speeds of up to 10 knots. Yeah, 10 knots is super Plus, fast yeah. for a fish. Uh, especially a group of fish yeah. moving in, in yeah. that coordination. Uh, the one that really just astounded me is this guy, Robert Rains. Right. Now, he, he had separate studies, right? 1972, 1975, 2001, 2008. This guy dedicated like a significant portion of his life yeah. to, to finding out the secrets or the, the answer to the Loch Ness. So question. he's done four different studies? Four different studies. Um, he, him and a group of research from the Academy of Applied Science, uh, led by Robert Browns, mm-hmm. conducted a search for the monster involving sonar examination of the loch depth for unusual activity. Uh, he took precautions to avoid using murky water. Uh, with floating wood and peat, so like the, yeah. the, the, the issues that the you... The PD particles. The PD particles, exactly. The issues that you highlighted. Um, he used like a camera with a massive floodlight to try and like, you know, pierce through the darkness. Yeah. No, no chance. <laughs> um, and they took pictures with the light on to try and sort of mm-hmm. reveal whatever they could. They were using a Raytheon DE725C sonar unit op- operating at a frequency of 200 kilohertz anchored at a depth of 11 meters. They had specialists from this place, like this Raytheon yeah. company. So they had like expensive, advanced Sonar equipment. equipment. And these, they, these specialists coming out to operate it? Yeah, specialists coming out to operate it. Jesus. Um, they had Marty Klein from MIT. So a guy from MIT. Uh, Klein Associates, another sonar producer. Mm-hmm. Another MIT guy. All these people coming over and analyzing the data and helping them do it. Uh, they said, suggested that the data indicated a three meter perturbance projecting from one of the echoes. According to author Ray Mackel, the ship was highly flexible, highly flexible, laterally flattened tail, Ooh. or the misinterpreted return of two animals swimming together. So either it's a tail, or that's, two animals that's flapping, or it's two animals and they haven't uh, gotten it right. This is the really cool part. Right. Concurrent with the sonar reading, so the sonar was picking up this stuff. Mm-hmm. The little camera with the floodlight that they had mm-hmm. set up, it actually managed to get a picture. No. Two, a pair of underwater photographs. Both pictures depicted what appeared to be a rhomboid flipper. So I think I've seen these photos. I think on yeah. like uh, on a show before. Yeah, and these are really they're not really good quality at all. No, but you can kind of make out this strange as rhomboid figure. So rhomboid is kind of like a diamond. Yeah, kind of like a, it's, no, it's, yeah. it's like a you know like that like diamond you see. It's like a four sided diamond. Yeah, yeah, it's like a square. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's been like Swirl squashed. Say, yeah, yeah. Uh, rhomboid flipper. 
Skeptics uh, have dismissed the images depicting the bottom of the lock, air bubbles, a rock, a fish fin, basically all different yeah. types of things. Because it's so dark, it's hard yeah. to tell. The apparent flipper was photographed in different positions, indicating movement. So it's not necessarily a stationary thing, a rock, yeah. a tree stump, Jeez. at the bottom of the lake. Uh, the first flipper photo is better known than the second, and both were enhanced and retouched from the original negatives. According to team member Charles we Wyckoff, it looks okay. like his name is Charles Wyckoff. Okay, well, Charles Wyckoff is fine. Charles Wyckoff, W-Y-C-K-O-F-F. -F. Okay. Uh, the photos were retouched to superimpose the flipper. The original enhancement showed a considerably less distinct object, so... Mm -hmm. When you put them together, it looks clear, but when you have them by themselves, yeah. not so much. During a meeting with Tony Harmsworth and Adrian Shine at Loch Ness Centre and Exhibition, Rhines admitted that the flipper photo may have been retouched by a magazine editor. So mm. the pop popular one that everyone's seen mightn't have been the, the original. The original. Um, but it picks something up. It picks something up and it appeared to move. So it not, yeah. wasn't probably... Prob yeah. I mean, it couldn't have been the bottom of the lake. It moved, right? Yeah. Um, because of this like diamond ship, uh, a naturalist called Peter Scott, he said that the Greek, the official name of the monster, if it was discovered, would be Nesoteris Rhombex Pteryx. I think. How does he? How does he? Rhombo Pteryx, yeah. Uh, which is Greek for Ness inhabitant with diamond shaped fin. Uh, okay. Apparently, what that means. He said this would enable uh, the creature to be added to the British Register of Projected Protected Wildlife if it was discovered. But it was interesting. Scottish politician Nicholas Fair Fairbairn called the name an anagram. He said he claimed this weird uh, yeah. Nesotaris Rompeteryx was an anagram for Monster Hoax by Peter S. Ah, uh, no way. By Sir Peter S. So it was an anagram of that. But then Rhines, who's the guy who ran these studies, these sonar studies, he counters it by saying, actually, you can also rearrange it to say, yes, both picks are monsters, dash R. No way. Yeah, so, you know. I don't think. Who looks into that stuff? Yeah, but it, conspiracy theorists, oh, man. People who are like into this. So, yeah, apparently it's an anagram for this. I don't think, I don't believe that like, people do that. Like, no. Make an anagram no, for it. No, no, no. Makes sense that they call it Ness Inhabitants. So, with this sonar and with his his, uh, his camera underwater, they, they got something. They got something. So, the story goes. That was the first one. That's 1970. 1971? Mm -hmm. A second search was conducted in 1972. Some of the photographs, despite their obviously murky quality and lack of concurrent sonar, so they didn't have the sonar this time around, um, did, indeed, did indeed seem to show unknown animals in various positions and lightings. One photograph appeared to show the head, neck, and upper torso of a plesiosaur-like animal. Plesiosaur right. being the, the, the dinosaur. Yeah. That's I think, that, though, with the plesiosaur as well, like those things need to come to surface to breathe. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, then it couldn't be. Yeah. Because you yeah. see them way more often. Well, them. that's the thing. Maybe like millions of years of evolution could have kept this thing down there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Could be a variant of it. But yeah, every like, I don't know, four, six hours or something, they would have to come to like the wheels. surface. Unless, like we said before with the caves, mm -hmm. there's like air pockets under the water in the oh, caves. Oh, yeah. That they're like navigating. Because mm -hmm. that's what these things would have like eaten and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a fair point. You wouldn't actually think about it. Yeah. Soft, silty ground, easy mm -hmm. to bury into, easy to you know house a cave. But you know, like. you need like a you need like a hard rock for a cave because otherwise. It would oh, true. Yeah, it would just crumble. Yeah, yeah. But like that's interesting. I never thought of that. Yeah. Um, I I don't think it, I don't think it probably is a plesiosaur. I don't think it's like at the sound mm -hmm. of it, but it could be like a variant or like you know like yeah a branched. descendant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. Da, 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 da. Skeptics argue the object is a log. So the thing they, that yeah. was pleased for, they say it's a log due to the lump on its chest um, area. It's a big log. A big log, yeah. yeah and it seems to move. So pretty fast know. as well. Another photograph seemed to depict a horned gargoyle head. Ooh. So they seem to see like something with horns on it, um, consistent with that of some sightings of the monster. Skeptics again point out that, the tree, that a tree stump was later filmed during... <laughs> I love this, the name of this. There's another search called Operation Deep Scan. Nice. In 1987, which bore a striking resemblance. So it was probably that. The thing about all these settings, though, as well, is that they're... It's not like one person is seeing, like, like this eel-like creature or Nessie. And then another person is seeing, like, a fucking bird or something. Yeah, yeah. They're all pretty consistent. Yeah. Or there or thereabouts. Do you know what I mean? They're all long... long 
pretty uh, big. Moves and moves pretty quick on water. Yeah. They're, yeah. And like displaced water when it yep. moves about, so it's large. Yeah. Like yeah, there's a consistent theme. Like yeah. that crossing um, of the road one though is really thrown. Yeah, that's weird. Thrown me off. But it could have been southern. It could have been like a Neil Slytherin or you know like we like a seal. Like seals. Four feet though. My seals don't have. Didn't see, he didn't say I have feet. Oh, he didn't. No, know four feet off. I mean four feet off the floor. I don't know. It was a big eel, like big a giant seal. worm. That's what it is. 2001, uh, Ryan's Academy of Applied Science. Mm. They were back again. They videotaped a V-shaped wake traversing still water on a calm day. So like a yeah. wake, so yeah. moving through the water. The Academy also videotaped an object on the floor of the lock resembling a carcass and found marine clamshells and a fungus-like organism not normally found in freshwater locks. A suggested connection to the sea and possible entry for the creature So. Something that doesn't normally live in freshwater lakes yep. was in, so if there could be this creature could be coming in and out. Yeah. And two thousand eight he also theorized that the creature may have become extinct, claiming the lack of sig- significant sonar readings and a decline in eyewitness accounts. He undertook a final expedition using sonar and an underwater camera in an attempt to find a carcass. He believes he believed the animals may have failed to adapt to temperature changes resulting from global warming. That that's possible. This thing's only going to live for so long. That's it, yeah. But you know, you'd think if it survived this long, it must there must be multiple of them, you know, multiple Maybe. creatures. But it could potentially have just died out now yeah. because of global warming or pollution or, you know. Nessie could be gone. Yeah, that's it. Nessie could have died. Part of me thinks, part of me actually kind of convinced about that because I think, like, it's really slowed down now. Yeah. So I think it could have, there could have been something there in the 30s that was genuinely, didn't belong in a freshwater lake, but no. it was there and now it's just gone. Yeah. died or yeah. went out to sea yeah. or did whatever um, and that, that makes a lot of sense to me like. yeah I mean if that dies and sinks to the bottom or washed out to sea it's just going to become fish food like exactly. chances of finding a corpse or anything it's just gone you know it was there once it's not there anymore yeah. you know Loch Ness Monster was like a you know it's not like a maybe a thing that resides always in Loch Ness yeah. it just happened to just be happened there just happened to be there at that time yeah and then it kind of blew up um, Operation De- Deep Scan which I mentioned uh, 1987 it was 24 boats equipped with echo sounding equipment uh, deployed oh this is the one you were talking about sorry deployed across the width of the yeah. lock and sent acoustic waves back to try and yeah. pick up on things like this lock is 26 miles long that's a lot of work man that's a fuckload of work that's from here right now to like Rushmere fucking hell crazy yeah. like that's a long way to go and it's just like open empty yeah. water like yeah um like you need a lot of luck. They made in this in this one they made sonar contact with an unidentified object of unusual size and strength. I don't know where I don't know how they're deriving strength. I don't know how they would know water it's displacement strong. maybe. Poss- possibly, yeah. This was the way if it's moving that if it's this large and it's moving that fast, it must be yeah. strong. Analysis of the echo sounder images oh gosh. Uh, seemed to indicate debris at the bottom of the lock, although there was motion in three of the pictures. They speculated that based on the size, they may, might be seals that had entered the lock. Seals is like... Seals is not I big enough. Seals, yeah. seals, I know seals can get big, but like not that big. Not big enough to confuse for like a fucking eel or something. Oh, yeah, like a wheel. A wheel. Yeah, I don't think so either. Wheel? Basking shark, maybe? <clears throat> yeah, possibly, actually. Good yeah. things like that. Um, sonar expert Daryl Lawrence donated a number of echo sounder units uh, used for the operation, Operation Deep Scan. Mm. After examining a sonar return indicating a large moving object at a depth of 180 meters, uh, Lawrence said, there's something here that we don't understand and there's something here that's larger than a fish. Maybe some species that hasn't been detected yet. I don't know. So he was convinced that there's something big yeah. and something moving. Yeah. And the last thing that I have here, Chris, we talked about this mm-hmm. on the podcast. I forget what episode. It was a while ago. Yeah. And it was the most recent theory, 2018. A DNA study performed by um, a university in the University of Otago, Copenhagen, Hull, and the Highlands and Islands. They did a, did, a, did, a, did a DNA survey of the lake in June, 19, June 2018, looking for unusual species. The results were first published in 2019. There was no DNA of large fish such as sharks, sturgeons, or catfish, so they didn't find any DNA evidence of that. There was no otter or seal DNA either. However, there was a lot of eel DNA found, Mm. discovered. Uh, The leader of the study, Professor Neil Gamel of the University of Otago, said that he could not rule out the possibility of eels of extreme size, though none were actually found and none were ever caught 
were ever caught. The other possibility is that the large amount of eel DNA simply comes from many small eels. No evidence of any reptilian sequences were found, he added. So I think we can be fairly sure that there is probably not a giant scaly reptile swimming around in Loch Ness. No, I don't know. I think that's what they want you to think. So that, <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the DNA survey. So, I mean, A, that was done in 2018. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to have any. As you say, like, if this thing was only in the 30s, yeah. it's dead and gone. Like, yeah, it's, it's fish gone. Food. Yeah, there's not going to be DNA there's left. There's not going to be much yeah. DNA left. Um, So there's eels there today. Giant eels, like, I'm kind of... Gi- giant eels kind of maybe do. Yeah. yeah, they didn't actually find any giant eels, but I mean, you probably wouldn't, right? No. Well... Well, they, I mean, they, they were just it, looking for eel DNA. Like, yeah. that's just DNA. So as long as they had, like, they, they didn't specifically set out to find certain types of eels, just the DNA, that'd be right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just know, like, this is this like, this like is the marker of an, of an eel. Yeah, so these mm. things can grow to, like, God knows what size. I suppose, yeah, why why hadn't they caught any, I suppose? You know, you'd think if there's... True. Genius. But yeah, like, I mean, for me, like, I think it's gotten to the stage now where if we're not seeing it, to, in this day and age when the technology we have in the DNA so like, it must be either gone or yeah, it's it moved on something else it's yeah, a it or, or what yeah. it is um, I remember reading about that one in the news and they were pretty adamant it's an eel it's a giant eel yeah. giant eel is something that still terrifies me like if there's giant a giant fucking yeah. eel how, how large are these things growing that they can crawl across you know 24 feet long yeah like there is Four things, feet there tall. are creatures I got that will literally like look at it look at uh, like saltwater crocodiles with food it will just keep growing. Yeah. Like they will not stop. Yeah. Till it dies. Yeah. And them, them things live for hundreds of years. That's insane. Do you know what I mean? So, like, man. Yeah, it could be God knows what yeah. living down there. Yeah, yeah. Part it's, of me thinks, I think like in today's age, the fact that we haven't discovered anything means that there, it, it must be gone. Like, either think? gone, dead, or it was like a wheel. Well, or was 2018 was... the last big study carried out? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah, that was the DNA one though. So like there was no son- sonar. Sonar, nothing. yeah. But that guy Ryan started coming back. Like, you know, he yeah. came back in 2007 yeah. and it was, he, even then he was like, we're not seeing this anymore. Like it's, the sightings have went down, everything's went down. He's thinking it's either gone. I mean, the other possibility is that all, all of those sightings were, one was an eel, one was a seal, one was a wheel. All different. All different things and yeah. people just kind of, got you know brought you know caught up in the mystery of it all and they all said oh well actually yeah maybe it did look a little bit more longer and you know yeah than a whale and maybe it was this or that so did you get caught up in the hype and hysteria of the whole loch ness monster they that, wanted that what pit, they, they saw they, to yeah. be a monster so they kind of made it yeah. a monster yeah so like they say every time you remember something you add or take away something yeah. what bit. do you believe like what do you believe like? i don't what do you, know what do you want to believe i mean what i want to believe uh I want to believe there is like a creature such as a plesiosaur that lives there. Yeah, or lived. Or lived. Like it's out yeah, there. Sure. The thing is, like, if it came in from the ocean, right? Which we know it. They found evidence of like non-native freshwater stuff in Loch Ness. Yeah, right? it can get. It can has access to the ocean. Yeah. It, if it just happened to be like a long-living creature, such as like this plesiosaur thing that we've mm-hmm. never seen. And I came into Loch Ness for a God knows what reason. Just yeah. got caught up and it got stuck there. And I lived there for a couple of years in the 1930s yeah. and then it died or it got out or whatever. Then it's somewhere out in the, the ocean. The ocean. The yeah. endless depths of the ocean. And if it's out there, like, I mean, there has to be so many different species that haven't been discovered. Oh, yeah. There yeah. has yeah. to be. Yeah. You know, there has to be thousands upon thousands. We're, like, we're creatures. probably never going to discover the, the entire ocean. In the depths of, like, the dark depths no. of the ocean? Like, no, never. You know, the, so potentially that's what it was, yeah. and they, that's what it came. You know, I wouldn't be, I definitely wouldn't dismiss that. I also wouldn't dismiss that it, it's a, like it was a weird, like mutant eel hybrid. Yeah, of yeah, just like a cross of animals, like a, like an eel that just grew to a fucking crazy size. Yeah, and just just owned that lock for a yeah. couple of years, and then it died. And then it died. And there's maybe giant eels that are frequent in that area. We just yeah. don't. They're just not fre- that frequent. For all they know, though. That we, the eels that are there now are going to grow to this size and we'll just not see it for another 20 years. Maybe that's it, like, yeah. I don't know. I like, there's something. There's definitely something. I wouldn't be swimming in it. <laughs> well, I got it. I go, I'm not going to go just, for a swim. Just the thought of it would petrify me too much. Um, And then, the, I mean, the other possibility is that it was just, it's just a local folklore thing that there's a monster in the, true, in the, in the lock true. and it's just lived on it's to this day. It's just lived on, yeah. It got a massive exposure. Yeah. Maybe there never was, or maybe there was. Maybe there was in five hundred, and it it was only there in five hundred and sixty five. I died. 
on a day and that's yeah. fine it was a journey back yeah. then but the myth has persevered yeah. to 2020 and it will continue to per- like this thing we'll still yeah. be talking about this in 100 years they're not going away like, until yeah. they drain the lake yeah and then they say it's definitely not here no we just killed all the wildlife yeah <laughs> yeah meanwhile Nessie's just sitting out in the ocean looking so like, at the I lake. haven't been there in years yeah, yeah. that's think, crazy man I mean you can say there's no smoke without fire so there was something there's something, something. about this lake that, that kicked it off I don't know if it was a thousand years ago, fifteen hundred years ago, or if it was nineteen thirties. Even there's a thought of giant like fish or catfish or eels or what have you. Like that that's scary enough for me. Like know, these things yeah. are living and breathing. We talked there. about this before. Uh I think you actually brought up th- philosophobia. Right? Oh yeah, philosophobia is it's just terrifying. The depths of the ocean yeah. and what, what yeah. can what can come from it. Just that Yeah, being surrounded um, by the large body of water. Do like you that, think you know? uh if if not for we talked about the surgeon's photograph, which is the, the famous photograph. Mm-hmm. Do you think if not for it, if it had never been taken, if they had never pulled this up? Yeah, it would not near as, be yeah. as big as what we have it, today. I think no. so too. It's that picture that made it, especially the, the whole shape, everything about it. As you say, you know, you get that whole, because we've seen the surgeon's photograph and it looks like that, maybe people are now like, oh, what I've seen wasn't it. Yeah, Do yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. Maybe it wasn't. Like Maybe it was just a seal, a harmless seal floating about, but... There, there was other pictures as well that were taken that yeah. weren't immediately debunked like this. There's videos on YouTube. There's videos on YouTube. That There's pretty, all kinds of stuff. Pretty, like 2008, 2007 yeah. videos. Yeah. You know? Um, like, and there's pictures. There's those pictures of the diamond shaped thing. Yeah. Like that was they don't they couldn't ad- easily identify the that fact as something. That there's still groups that are willing to pursue this, pursue the study of this, and you know fund these uh, like sonar. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know you? I'm never gonna I'm not gonna dismiss it initially before I even like looked into this I dismissed it I was like it's probably just it's nothing something people nothing. thought they saw something they didn't see yeah. but now I'm kind of a little bit more open to it and I think you know there's a part of me that thinks in maybe 20 years there'll be some new way of like identifying what used to live in the water yeah what was here yeah. and they might pick up on traces of something that shouldn't be there something of like a I don't know like a what do you call them like a fish a big fish that eats other fish like a Carniv- carnivorous oh fish. yeah 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 or something like that that doesn't you know you wouldn't like expect to find it a lot yeah yeah part of me thinks that in maybe yeah. 10 20 years they'll find something that they'll say actually there was something in this lock that you wouldn't expect to that's it like but like strange things happen with animals too and they get like these notions and tendencies and every so often they'll just like not every so often but like look at like great white sharks like they're getting closer and closer to like even ireland and yeah, yeah. us now maybe like back then five sixty whatever it could have just be it could be there was it, a different current exactly like a different, different fish or something yeah. that was there now that now only lives in like pacific waters or like you know real hot water some somewhere, somewhere else like that, do you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah it could be anything like that so many the world changes like yeah around us without us even really noticing this stuff because yeah, we never exactly. paid any attention to that stuff no. back then like no, yeah, like I'm, I'm definitely like I'm more open to it by having read into it. Yeah, and a lot of that was done by the fact that there were some serious, like, genuine efforts to try and find this thing using sonar yeah. and all these, all oh, these yeah. things. You know? yeah, yeah, And like, there's, there's a, there's a question that still needs to be answered. You know, mm-hmm. was, was there something there or not? Yeah. You know, these people did they all just make it up or did they all just get no, confused or you know? This is what keeps us know. keeps us going. This know? is what keeps us in business. Dude. That's it. Yeah, yeah. We need more mysteries. Um, if you have any comments or queries or thoughts about Nessie, let us know. Yeah. Because I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know? Do you believe it? Do you believe in the, the myth? Do you, or do you believe it's a myth? Do you think it's all made up? Do you mm-hmm. think no, there's definitely something there? Yeah. Right. Would you go, would you take a, an expedition to Scotland with us? I mean, I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to just see it. Yeah. Just the, uh, It's probably beautiful as yeah, well. Yeah, like. yeah, definitely. Scottish Highlands, like it's got to be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, let us know your thoughts. Uh and opinions on this one mm-hmm. um i stand firm with believing that there's something or was something for sure um but yeah thank you for bringing this to our attention this week d this is a great topic uh, i'm really enjoyed. glad that we did it yeah 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 so i was trying to find something that that's was been worthy something, that's been something that's been there for a while for us to discuss and we can and just haven't yeah um I-, I wanted something that was worthy of 100 and yeah this one is like nasty this one is yeah world renowned. Yeah. It's not too dark. No, nope. it's not murders. It's Ooh. it's all fairly lighthearted stuff and yep. it's interesting. Unless people have been killed. In I hope not. Yeah. God, after having just said what I just said, <laughs> really hope nothing happened. Um, let's finish off this podcast strong then, D, with uh, personal with the podcast. With the podcast. Before we do that, Chris, I have a little tidbit for you. Oh, yeah. Have I said it already? I don't think I have. And did you know? Did you know? Oh, did you know? Yeah. Um, Hagen does. Yeah. 
famous ice cream brand. Yeah. German brand. Do you know what it means? Ha- Hagen Dazs. Hagen Dazs. Hagen Dazs. I feel like I might have heard this once. Uh, does it mean something like that's good? No. I'll tell you what it means. Good cream? It doesn't mean anything at all. What? It's a made up word. No, it's not. Hagen Dazs is a made up word. A co creator of the brand, an American called Ruben Matthias, yeah. invented the phrase Hagen Dazs when he was looking for a brand name that was Danish sounding. An American wanted a Danish sounding name. He claimed he, he was like, he had been. He claimed that Danish products would be well respected in America, they'd have like a good reputation, and Denmark at the time was a like quite in high regard. It was like shortly after World War Two, and they had like a, I think they had like helped like Jewish oh, refugees yeah. and stuff. And um, he claimed he wanted a Danish sounding name, so he, he went with Hagen does, which doesn't mean anything in Danish. No way. The closest. I thought it was German. No, it's it's allegedly Danish. The closest like uh, pronunciation you can get is if you like. Because they, they have like, you know, they have the A ah with like the two little dots above it. That doesn't mean anything, you know. And they have DAS spelt D-A-Z-S. It's just not a word. That's marketing but, genius. Uh, right? But uh, you can, like, you can kind of convert it to the closest sounding thing. If you say Hagen, Hagen in Danish means the chin. Okay. And DAS means outhouse slash toilet. The chin toilet. The chin toilet. Brilliant. Yeah. And DAS isn't even a Danish word. It's a, it's a, it's a. It's a German slang word that has been like incorporated into Danish over the years. So it really means nothing at all. Wow. And it's just marketing Hagen does and it's world renowned. And everyone knows about it and it doesn't That's mean brilliant. anything at all. Hagen does. That's brilliant marketing. Yeah, there you go. I just realized I had news there as well, but it's not really news actually. It kind of suits this mm-hmm. this area. Um did you see the like the big DC Fandom, it was called. No, during the week, because no. all like all the DC properties, like Batman, Suicide yeah. Squad, they had like loads of trailers and stuff. Out no, really, I didn't really see good. It, no. The new Batman, the Batman movie, the Batman with Rob Bat Pattinson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what, do you, what do you think of that? What? Like Robert Robert Pattinson, Pattinson. As Batman. Oh, yeah. It looks pretty good, man. Mm. It looks dark. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. looks moody. Yeah. Like, he's getting a bit of a renaissance now oh yeah he's not just the twilight guy anymore because yeah. he's in tenet and he's in that's right he is in tenet he's in a yeah. couple of different movies he's he's um uh, you odds haven't seen tenet yet no 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 okay he's odds on to be the next bond as well really things, things are looking up all right buy your stock in robin pattinson <laughs> right but um yeah, it looks really good man it's it looks dark it looks like a like joker act dark right. yeah like it starts off with like a murder yeah and this is the trailer it starts off with like a murder and like there's all this like it's like a detective like mm-hmm. it's almost like a crime story where just Batman happens to be yeah. in it and he's brutal in it his Batman is like yeah he's angry he's yeah. younger like a kind of newer Batman okay no it looks good man looks really okay. good Suicide Squad also looks great really James Gunn oh yeah uh, Guardians yeah James Gunn nice. James, oh, it looks it looks campy it looks silly it looks great okay um, and there's new games there's loads of stuff I haven't seen album. anything from yeah. it get yourself on YouTube get yourself a call yeah yeah um, I've been on YouTube just watching nonsense. Shade, yeah. I do the same every God, day. It's man. just it's just falling down whales. Watch our whales. stuff. Yeah. Go do that. You yeah. know, fall down our whale. I did fall down our whale when I was cleaning out our hard drive. Did you watching all our old? Crap. I cleaned out our, my hard drive as well. Yeah. I deleted all of the raw footage from the old podcast. That's exactly what I did yeah. as well, and just kept the finished footage. Kept yeah, the finished yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's nice seeing it all though like in files after remember I sent oh, you the yeah. video and it was just like a hundred episodes just bang 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 it's fucking sick real, real tasty like. real tasty yeah real, real tasty. tasty Um, yeah what have you got up to food it's movies watching food doing uh, yeah I haven't been doing much I mean naturally not many people are doing much nah, with COVID these days I think the most I done is, is this project this is an awesome project it's a pretty nice project it's, it actually kind of sucks we can't show everything right now but yeah We'll do. We will do a tour. There was so much Definitely. done in here. Maybe next really episode we'll start it with a tour. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice start up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For me, we got new desks. Put those together. That was my biggest task. Nice. <laughs> nice. No, we. Haven't. Did you go to IKEA? No, we got it delivered. You delivered. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, we got new desks. Uh, watched a few movies lately. What have you been watching? We watched. Um, we started with Game Night. Have you Game seen Game Night? No, I haven't. No. Jason Bateman. Yeah. Um, Rachel McAdams and I'm really fond of Jason Bateman at the minute watching Ozark so. oh it's good it's a really good film yeah it real. I got real Horrible Bosses vibes oh yeah from it Horrible Bosses fucking awesome can't beat it yeah well this is as good as that I would say 
Have you seen Horrible Bosses 2? No. No, me either. I don't think I, I might have, but I don't think I have. I don't think I want to. No? No. I think the first one was brilliant. Yeah. And that's where I can good. leave it. We watched and we watched Horrible Bosses shortly after that because nice. I was like, this is, that, if you yeah. liked it, you know, you'll definitely like Horrible Bosses, which is great. Um, Knives Out. Have you seen Knives Out? No, that's the murder mystery. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. Okay, good. Really, really good, I think. Keeps you guessing, keeps you going right to the end. Um, a big who done it? Yeah, a big who done it. With a twist, with an interesting twist. That could be a good podcast episode for us. We could do a murder mystery. I literally have it written on my phone. No, you don't. Uh, it's, 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 yes, I do. One mind. It's like, it's one, like mind. one mind. I have, an, I have like our own spin on it though. It's like, um, where is it? The guys solve a crime. That's already been solved. Oh. So like we do, a, we try and solve a crime that was solved historically. We don't know the details of it. So we try and work out a murder mystery. Using all I, the evidence. Very it? much. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Um, yeah, what else, man? I don't think I've really been up to a whole pile. Played a couple of games. Played it. Wolfenstein. Youngblood. Nice. Played it. And... Is that the DLC? No, it's like a, it's like a spin-off kind of game. Oh. It's co-op. It's me and Rob both played. You were playing Gears. Yeah, we How played Gears. Go? Oh, man, we got... We got to the new missions on the Ultimate Edition. We have them. It's just tough to really get They're through them. They're just not part of the no. game for me. no. You know, I did the same thing. I was playing it. I played it with Michael, and he was loving it because it was heavily based around a Brumac. And he mm. was like, "What is this thing?" And I was like, "Ah, uh, I just no, it didn't really do it for me. I just wanted to get the train station, get on that train, exactly. and get the ram." Exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we kind of we left it, and then you know, the problem with these things, we just leave it for a day or two. You it's hard to get back, back into. It. Yeah, we stopped on Gears Three, and I haven't got back going yet. No, oh, raging because it's one of the best ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I'd love to get through Gears Two and Gears Four. Uh, Gears Ultimate Edition is on PC, so we actually might finish it there. Yeah. And then, um, nice. Pick it up. But yeah, man, it hasn't been a whole pile. I have been like... balls deep, isn't even the phrase to use. I've been deeper than that in uh, Mario Kart. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was Jeez. worried there was a sentence, man. <laughs> no, Mario Kart has just taken over our family at the minute. That's good. I say family, I mean like the children of the family. Uh, deluxe. Mm-hmm. Or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah. 200cc, it's a bitch but my god it is is there's so much cussing and there's so much fighting and there's so much just brawling just over everything it. yeah it's just everything that's good, good like, it literally doesn't matter what you do the entire race until like the last two bends you just get lucky the last 30 seconds you yeah. just get something a good good couple items someone has a pretty like a, a shit show and that's it and you take the w and that's it or you take 12 yeah and you were first the whole yeah. way so i've been playing it and we've, and we've been playing smash a lot oh um, nice that's in all the, I've been in the Nintendo scene right now. Caught up with uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Mm. Completely caught up with it. And Ozark is what I'm watching. I need to finish Bojack. Still haven't finished it. And I think that's it in terms of watching. Birdman. I watched Birdman. Excellent movie. Holy shit! What a movie. Excellent movie. Great movie. Like <laughs> so good, so dark. Yeah, and but so funny as well. Brilliant. Yeah, he's a great actor. Michael Keaton is oh, a great actor. Fucking tremendous. Yeah. That's actually another bit of news that came out of the DC thing. Um, Michael Keaton is returning as Batman. Wow. <laughs> Not really in the way you'd think. Both him and Ben Affleck are returning in the new Flash movie. That's right. So he's going to be like... I've seen Ben Affleck's name for that. Mm-hmm. I didn't see... So like Flash can like travel through time and is dimensions. Is he going to be old Batman and Ben yeah, Affleck's going to so. be younger? I think, I think there's... Like, it's the Flashpoint movie, so it's like he can like travel through time, he can travel through dimensions, so he's going to be visiting all these weird places and trying to make sense of it all. Yeah. And you have different Batmans to help him. But yeah, it's pretty mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's Michael Keaton, so such a good actor, man. Michael Keaton's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I look forward to having Shawnee Mac on with us again. Just to... We could basically just talk movies the whole time. We'll just talk movies. It'll just be a movie podcast, I think. We'll talk movies, what we've seen, TV shows, shit We'll like quiz them. Yeah. We'll get a quiz going. Yeah. Movie quiz. Yeah, sure. We'll quiz you. Yeah. That's great. We should do that. Um, food, I haven't even eaten anything worth talking haven't about. Eaten anything. <laughs> nothing worth no- nothing worth noting, I don't think, B. Do, 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 do. We had... Um, A lot of places are only getting back in their feet and opened we again. We went to two places during August. So the, the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. Yeah. So we got like £10 off each. We got £20 off yeah. two meals. Um, what's a place in Belfast called Scalini's Italian Restaurant? Had the Carbonara. It's literally the best thing. Uh, so fucking good. good. 
Holy shit. I didn't know where you're going with that. I thought you were going to say it was disappointing. No, it was amazing. Yeah. It was so fucking What's it called? Skill. Scalini? Scalini. means the steps. In oh. Italian. Looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Looked it up while I was waiting in the appetizer. It is. It's like a weirdly set out like restaurant because there are loads of different levels. We're about some Belfast, isn't it? Botanic. It's beside like Botanic Gardens and uh, Queen's University. It's a good spot, man. Yeah. It's a good spot. I'd recommend it. Oh, yeah. Also, okay. I also went to a barbecue place called Blaze and Glaze. Did you tell me about that? No. No, I think so. I've only heard about it recently. No, nope, then definitely not. <laughs> there you go. Hmm. Ironically, it burnt down. Blaze Seriously? Blaze. Yeah, like its original location burnt down. Wow. You drove past it and I seen this place and I laughed. It's like, ha, ah, Blaze and Glaze, look, it's burnt down. And Laura's like, oh, yeah, we should definitely go there. And I was like, it's burnt down. Yeah. Like, I don't know, but they've moved to a new location. Was it in the Lisburn Road? Yeah, no, no, it was beside the Lisburn Road. It was just off the Lisbon Road on University Street. Whenever you say that, I feel like I've seen somewhere like that that was burnt mm. a while ago. You in Belfast recently? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 I will be. I'll be up in Belfast on Saturday coming, I think. Good time to be in Belfast. Why? Mm, just okay. generally. No, I meant to say to you, um, I, well, this is if he gets back to me, but you know, Frank, like... McBride? Yeah. Has, has asked us to come and visit him. Ashak, is he in Belfast? Yeah. Oh, so I should probably, probably like a mile away from him or something. Probably. Do you know where about he is? No. I will probably do this off pod. No, yeah. Dachshund. No, no idea. But um, if you're free on Saturday, we could go and see. I know he's babysitting, like he's his own child, obviously. But I mean, he's he's he, he, uh, he's there home alone. And I had asked him to come out for a podcast, and he said, "No, I'm here." And I said, "Well, listen, if me and dear are free, bring the podcast to you. Why don't we come to you?" And he says, "Yeah, he'd love to. He'd love to have us." So absolutely. If you're free, we. I did not. I thought it was some dairy or somewhere. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. What about now? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna throw out some. Uh, here we fucking go. Plan. Y'all ready for this? We could do a road trip to Belfast. We could do a road trip. Oh, I'd have to come here first. You'd have to come here, and then one of us would have to drive up. And then I'd probably have to drive. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm assuming I drive drive you back. <laughs> you to drive back to Belfast. Yeah, which wouldn't be ideal. It wouldn't be ideal, but we'd get a kick-ass video out of it. Yeah, we could. That could be cool. That could be really cool. <laughs> yeah, but either way, we'll go see Frank maybe on Saturday. It's a good idea. I free. like it. Yeah. Should be free. Should be good to go. Yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, apart from that, yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. Here's just, just making plans on podcast. We know you want to hear it. I know. Don't say you don't. I'll show it for nine people by chewing on these peanuts. Yes, it's just we're a not even nut. sorry. Don't it's care. a bowl of nuts just sitting on the table. Yeah, we'll do a we'll do a studio tour for the next episode. We might have oh no, the next episode might be the road trip. The road trip. We'll, we'll do, do the road trip as a separate thing. You missed us. We'll do a studio tour. Studio tour soon. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was just thinking, like we we got to get more people on. We'll get more people on. Not that it's hard to get people on, but I'm just like we'll webinar them in. Why don't you like? Make a, <laughs> make a case for yourself to come and do a podcast All with right. us. All right, this is what you got to do, right? Get your phone out. Get your phone out of your pocket. Like, Record yourself. Tell me why you want to be in the podcast. And tell me what you can bring to the table. Yeah. Literally, what you bring yeah. to the table. No, don't do that. Want to know how many followers you got on the gram? Yeah. No, no. Want no, we're not, not want no weak sauce. But <laughs> No weak sauce. Okay. <laughs> Time to have a yeast feast. No, I think, um, I think the more like random, the better. Because it'll just... It'll force us to work hard. Yeah. Random topics, you know. Give us what whatever you're experted in. Yeah. Experted in whatever you're an expert in. Yeah. We'll come and learn Definitely. that for you. Yeah, let's do that. Um, but yeah, road trip. Shawnee Mac, James Sinker swim. He should be joining us soon as well. So. Great. I haven't seen him in years. <laughs> I haven't seen him in ages either. <laughs> Jesus. Hope we keep him well. Hope we keep him well. Um, that's all I really have. Yeah, no, no yeah, right, that's excellent. That's good. It's been it's been a while, but we're gonna be more regular now. More videos on the channel as well, ideally. Like, yeah. I mean, we're not gonna. We say this every week, but I think it would it's be the a... empty promise podcast. Yeah, you know, yeah. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get us, that. You gotta give us that, like. Yeah. But we do have a pretty sweet studio set up here at the minute. Yeah. It's so much better than what we used to have, and it's cozy. My it is toasty. That's what it was, toasty. It's a toasty, cro- it's a toasty, crispy little setup. No, I use them all. So good. Um, so it would be a shame not to use it. So we just got to get together. I know it's a bit out of the way for you, but even if we're like doing video conference, yeah. like I'll sit out here. And just sit here. I'll get I'll get a green screen. I'll take a picture of this and I'll look like I'm there. That'd be sick. No, don't worry about it. That'd be great. Bank holiday Monday. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know if this right. be, I don't know if this will be out in the bank holiday Monday or not. Oh well, yeah. I, I work fast. That's good. That's good. I wanna. I gotta do a little intro first. Hopefully. Oh, nice. Hopefully, I'll get that done. Like audio intro? Yeah, like the new music. Oh, it's new music. Tell us what you think about the new music. Oh shit! And the new logo. You haven't seen the new logo yet. Have you? What's the new logo? Oh yeah. So it just hasn't been on a video yet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, it has. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a new logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. Oh no, it has. It's been on it. I lied. A total lie. Total fib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Ready. We're rambling. Wrap let's, up. Let's wrap it up. Okay. Um, thank you for joining us in episode 100 of the podcast. If you've made it this far, perhaps you're willing to go a little further. <laughs> Why don't you drop this video a like? Let's see if that works. Drop that video a like. We never ask people to like our videos. And you should because we're we're not bad. And right? it takes like two seconds to click yeah. the like button. And or it makes a big difference. If you're on like Apple Podcasts, you could like rate us. I think if that's yeah. still a thing. Rate us. Five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars. That'd be really cool. Or just like pass us on to like your friends, coworkers, relatives, whoever. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Because like th- there's bound to be something in like our rep- our hundred episode repertoire that like, <laughs> people you, are going to enjoy. Yeah, our portfolio. <laughs> you know? Our catalog. This, after everything from here on for us is season three. Yeah, season three. Yeah. Season it's like, three. Yeah. yeah. We're almost so episode started. 100 is done now. And that will be season two wrapped up. So 101, 101 is season three starts. So yeah. we'll have all the new shit then. New logos, music, all, all everything. Yeah. We, we got it all. It's all here. It's all today. Won't even be us. Yeah. Two new people. Two new podcast two hosts. <laughs> we sold the rights. Um, but yeah. <laughs> million million. If you could drop us a like on the video, that'd be great. Or a rating or whatever. Just spread the word, you know, because that helps us out tremendously. Uh, but thank you to all the regular li- listeners who tune in on the weekly basis or bi-weekly basis or tri-weekly basis. Um, it means a lot to us that you do hang in there for our episodes when we get them out. Yeah. Um, but we will try harder for I'll, you. Now. Yeah, we'll be better. Being Especially more season three. Season From now three. to Christmas. Season three is confusing. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Because it's 101, right? It's season three for us. Not yeah, really for true. them. Season just one just, for us was like 22 one. episodes. Now we went from 22 to 100. <laughs> we'll see you all in episode 101. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's much better. Um, find us on any podcast hosting service. If you want the audio version, remember you can find the video version uh, at youtube.com slash x8 no slash empty promise podcast. <laughs> Whoops. Find, <laughs> Step find, back to season one there. For a <laughs> find us on social media using our handle empty promise podcast where we promise if you tag us in something, we will respond. I check my Twitter. No one fucking, no one texts me. Like, fucking lamb bad. <laughs> we'll we'll respond as quickly as we possibly can, and that episode is upcoming. So if you have any episode suggestions as well, um, get through to us with those. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you all next week for episode one hundred and one. Woo! Goodbye and God bless. Cheerio.